It's a beautiful day for pickleball on the APP Tour. Delray Beach, Florida, just north of Miami, is known as the Village by the Sea. Here it seems the sun is always shining, but the only glow these professional pickleball players want is golden. And to do that, they have to win right here on championship court at the Delray Beach Tennis Center. Welcome to stop number four of the 2024 APP Tour, the APP Vlasic Classic, Delray Beach. Pickleball players from across the country have traveled to Delray Beach, Florida for a chance at that gold medal. More than 300 pros, 28 of 36 APP medalists this season, 13 of 16 gold medalists, and six players with over 40 career APP medals in the field today and this weekend, which means it is a stacked field here in Delray Beach. And Stacked in the broadcast booth with these two partners. I'm AJ McCord, Next Gen National Team Coach Chad <laughs> Edwards, Pro Pickleball Coach Dominic Catalano. We've got men's and women's doubles action for you all day right here from Delray Beach. Two more gold medals matches going to be decided today. But before we get to that, let's see what's already happened this weekend, you guys, because we have men's men's singles, women's singles, and mixed doubles. Here is your Aura Organic gold medal match menu. Well, on Sunday in the men's single side, it's the one versus two seed Chris Hayworth and J.W. Johnson had a couple tough semifinals. Chris Hayworth got over Will Howes. And then J.W. Johnson over a qualifier, John Cangelosi, who made a great run all day long but ran into J.W. Johnson. So we get that one versus two seed matchup on Sunday. Yeah, and on the women's side, we have the one and two seed matchup of Megan Fudge and Yudit Castillo. Second time we're going to see this matchup in 2024. Castillo came away with the gold in the season opener in Punta Gorda. Fudge, the model of consistency, four finals, four appearances. But we'll see if she can get the redemption over Yudit Castillo. And in the mixed matchup, we have Braverman and Deescu. I talked a lot about them yesterday. What was going to be the dynamic with them two? Two very fiery players. They didn't have the best day, and they said that, too, in the interview with them. They said they didn't play really well, but they grinded it out and really showed what they're made of punching their ticket to Championship Sunday. Yeah, and they're going up against the five seed of Georgia Johnson and Gabe Tadio, the youngsters with the fast hands. But you know what? All four players know each other extremely well. They've partnered together already in their respective genders. They've won medals. So it'll be interesting to see who can find the right sequences, the right speed ups, and the right spots. Going to be a lot of fun to see all those matches tomorrow. But today, a lot of fun pickleball on top as well. We have men's and women's doubles going all the way through, handing out some gold medals here in Delray Beach. Walk me through, Chad, what you're most looking forward to seeing today. Yeah, I mean, I really like these days where we go all the way through because then we, we really see the adjustments that these players are making. But right now... We're seeing the top seeds in the positions that they should be. A couple have been tested already, so we'll see how this day plays out. And on the women's side of things, you have Allison Harris, Simone Jarjing, your top seed. They won already this morning. And then your two and three seeds with Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman, who we're going to see, and then Susanna Barr and Mari Humberg. Fudge and Barr, separate this tournament for you know, uh, for the time being. But again, now they're the two and three seeds. They could meet up in a semifinal. So it'll be interesting to see, but both of them have to get through very tough quarterfinals first. It's going to be really fun to dive into all the new partnerships and what is at stake here in Delray Beach. And if you're going to play all the way through to a gold medal match, you couldn't ask for a better day to do it. 74 degrees, 55% humidity, Delray Beach living up to the postcards. Coming up next, we have live action for you on Championship Court. Women's doubles, Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman taking on Heather Nobler and Bobby Oshiro. Stick with us. We'll be right back. My name is Chef Jamoke Jackson. I'm here with Vlasic Pickles, and I'm putting the pickle back in pickleball. In pickleball, a chop is a slice from high to low to put a backspin on the pickleball. I'm chopping up Vlasic Pickles to make this sweet and savory chopped pickle salad. 
Feta cheese, Kalamata olives, olive oil, red wine vinegar, lemon juice, sugar, black pepper, toss the mix. Sweet, heat, and full of flavor. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend. When he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance, knees will be slapped, suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. by Vlasic Pickles, official pickle of the APP Tour. AARP, helping your health and happiness live as long as you do. And Rainstorm, clean, plant-based energy. Women's Pro Doubles action here at Delray Beach, Florida, the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach. Taking a look at Jill Braverman, she and Megan Fudge taking on Heather Nobler and Bobby Oshiro. There's Megan right there. Both of these women, Jill and uh, Megan, two to watch on the APP tour, but it's going to be Bobby Oshiro getting it started with the serve. Nobler leaving that cross court dink a little short. I'm a little surprised at the setup here for Oshiro and Nobler. Nobler on the right has a very good forehand old dink. Yeah. And if you put Bobby on the left, it puts her forehand in the middle, which is a big forehand, too. Point. Great placement there from Fudge. Finish off the point, get them on the board. Yeah, and Fudge exposed just what you were talking there yeah. as far as pulling Nobler out wide, one. not uh, as crafty with that backhand dink as she is with the forehand. Second serve. And not surprised with the setup here for Fudge and Braverman, putting Braverman on the One right, more, and Fudge on the left. That ball a little long. Side out. Just missed right there. There is, there is some wind in the stadium right now. Normally Zero. it's a little tricky to, to pick it out in the stadium, but definitely in the face. Oh, great. ATP from Braverman. I thought that, I thought that I ball, thought that was, ball out. was wide. Anyway. Yeah. I, maybe Bobby did too. Yeah, I think Bobby didn't think Braverman was going to play it. She did. There's Bobby Oshiro. Won a gold medal in Punta Gorda, our first tournament of 2024 originally from Hawaii. Played her collegiate tennis in Idaho for now calling Florida home. The Boise Point State one. Bronco. I know. Being Bobby Oshiro. Feels right at home on this blue court. That's a pretty oh, good tennis that's program good right catch there. That's good catch right there, AJ. <laughs> on the blue court. Ooh. And this is what you're going to see. You're going to see Heather Nobler see a steady diet of pickleballs her way. They're going to try and keep Bobby Oshiro one, one, one. out of it as much as possible. Oh, fighting over the middle ball. Good job there from Braverman. She stepped over for the shake and bake. Was aggressive, but stayed. She didn't try to adjust and get out of the way. Oh, 
point. Well, that's one of the things when we talk about the new partnerships, we saw the communication from Nobler and Oshiro, and how much does that Three, have one. a second of doubt? Who's going to get this ball? Big. Yeah. Because then you're a half second too point. late, and that's a big adjustment in such a small court. I mean, um, it's interesting to see Braveman's being a little bit Four, more one. aggressive on the right side as far as her movement than what we saw when she was playing with Georgia Johnson in Sacramento. Point yeah, one, right two. now it's just all Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman going, you know, a steady diet of pull the trigger right now. They're going to force Nobler and Oshiro to slow this up right now. Five, Four, one. One. Point. I'm surprised no time out here. Very surprised. 6-1-1. Six, six, one, one. One. Six, one, one, the score for Fudge's serve. I think Fudge was shocked that that ball was going to be right there. Well, I, I, yeah, it was almost like it was a, a second take back on the back end right there. She read it, and then she just didn't do anything with it. 6-1-2 on to their second serve. Yeah, and that's why Bobby O'Shiro on the left side, that forehand. If Nobler gives her room right there, Bobby O'Shiro can work that. I almost thought that serve was long. Well, again, though, the wind is swelling. I'm looking at the flag that's across on this. It's blowing in the face of Fudge and Braverman. But here in the booth, we're feeling it in our face coming Correct. from Fudge and Braverman. 1-6-2. Mm -hmm. The score for Oshio's serve. Speed up from Braverman gets past Oshiro. And that's a very good hold there from Braverman. It, it had been a steady stream of balls to Nobla from both Fudge and Braverman. Braverman just drops the paddle head down, waits for Oshiro to commit a half step, and then flicks it back crossbody. One sailing just a little bit wide off the forehand of Oshiro. Seven one one for Braverman. Braverman read that perfectly. She was sprinting to the sideline before Oshiro even pulled the trigger. You're laughing, Jack, because you know it too. I, she's, she's all over got, it. She got she, way too excited. She almost overran it. Wow, just so many unforced errors right now from Nobler and Oshiro. Eight one two. And that's a very Point. tough ball to speed up on there. Even though it's sitting up, there was a lot of backspin on it, and Nobler didn't adjust. So as she hit through, that ball just sailed on her. So a timeout called here on the court by Nobler and Oshiro. They have got to find some rhythm if they want to get back in this game one. Best two out of three, two eleven gives us time. Take a Tervis hydration break, all of us, with our nice Tervises customized so that there's uh, <laughs> no confusion mine. here in the booth. Anyway, I, I, I'm not going near your water bottle. Don't you <laughs> even worry. Dad. And it's all water today. All no water. one's got anything different <laughs> no. today because the, the rainstorm people haven't been around. I don't yet. have a rainstorm in front of me. I'm lacking the caffeine. Well, we it's only I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Well, yeah, I'm going to need it later 11. today. Yeah, we got to yes. space out the caffeine. Water, though, all day long. So, shout out to Tervis for the customized water bottles. We are very grateful for that. Back on the court, women's doubles quarterfinals. Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman with commanding lead here in game number one of 9-1. Out of the timeout, called by Oshiro and Nobler. Chad, before they get the serve off, I want to know, what do you do? You're Oshiro and Nobler. You just got to go back to simpler pickleball. You've got to try and find the feet of Fudge and Braverman. <laughs> or just roll it back out wide, and that's exactly what Dom was talking about, right? With the craftiness of, of the nobler role. Mm. She See, but then I'm disappointed now because they go back. 
Doctor. <laughs> but at, at the same time, right, what's a Bobby Oshiro's patented shot is the ball off the right foot, drop back, roll forehand through the middle. So it's a, it's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, see, right now, what I like to see, I like that point construction right there, but again, not the you know, not the time to speed up and want to play hands battle right there. you got to keep that ball low, and I want to see them dink more to Braverman. Well, and it wasn't a full commitment to that speed up right there either. Great spot there by Braverman. Out of the reach of Braverman's paddle. So on to their second serve. 8, the, finish it off in the middle. The Ashiro forehand's not coming back no. when it's elevated like that. I mean, such good point construction right there. Much better. And then what gave them the advantage is when Nobler got involved. Yes. You're watching Fudge try to stay to Oshiro oh, because they know Nobler has that role if she is on that left or that right side. Excuse me. Just misses wide. So a really important hold for Oshiro and Nobler as Braverman and Fudge did not add to their total out of that timeout called chance to get some points of their own here. Oh. Another big backhand. But still oddly enough, there's still some miscommunication in the middle with mm. Nobler and Oshiro, and I'm kind of surprised because they know each other and played before and are very familiar with each other's game. Oshiro just tried to rush that back in there, get it off quickly, go back cross court behind herself so she had to try to recover to cover down the line. Point. Little help from the net there and sets up a game point opportunity here for Fudge and Braverman. Megan Fudge originally from Germany but now calls Florida home can win game one right here. And they do. Really well constructed game one from Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman as they take the first game 11 to 2 over Heather Nobler and Bobby Oshiro. Some adjustments have to be made for those two as we head to game two. If they want to force a decisive game three, we'll have game two when we come back to the APP Vlasic Classic, Delray Beach. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. A typical insurance? You're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? 
taking control. Humana, a more human way to health care. via the QR code on your screen to get your instant discount. Game one of our women's doubles quarterfinals here on Championship Court was all Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman taking it 11-2. Well, Braverman and Fudge just came out. They were playing with pace right there. Braverman going off the body of Bobby O'Shear, but look at this. Braverman taking over in the middle. But again, it was all about pace. They came out and just started swinging and never stopped. Yeah, and I think a couple of things that Nobler and Oshiro have to clean up here in game two for sure is that uncertainty in the middle. Um, you know, in reality, they're both very good right side players. And that's a better roll there from Nobler to start it out. Took that ball early, got underneath it. Big step in there from Nobler. Big forehand. Finish that off. Get their first point. The issue was she was off balance on that. If if Fudge gets it over the net, she's burned backside. She's got to stay balanced. She was there. Just a little bit of hesitation coming back to the middle. Good setup on that more aggressive backhand roll there from Nobler. Puts them onto their second serve. Nobler with it. Oh, great forehand from Jill Braverman right at the feet of Oshiro. Can't get it back over the net, so it will be a side out. 1-0-2. Or 1-0-1, zero zero one, excuse me, for Braverman's serve. And the speed up there. Great defense in the middle of that firefight by both teams, but Nobler with the finish. How many bait balls can both teams throw up? They were waiting <laughs> for someone to pull the trigger. All four ladies are throwing up bait balls going, I dare you, pull the trigger. Shira gets, or excuse me, Nobler gets one friendly roll off the net, but can't get a second, so ties us up, one off. Yeah, that last ball just got too far behind oh, the left shit. foot of Heather Nobler. Came out flat off the paddle. Ooh, lucky to get away with that one there. Nobler got a little tied up. It got into the body, close to the body. She floated it. One, one, one. Fudge just overhit it a little bit, and the wind didn't push it down at all. That's Nobler trying to catch Braverman pinching in the middle, but pushes it wide. Looked like Braverman was there anyway. What you're seeing, too, here from Fudge and Braverman is they're not stacking. They're just playing straight up right now. Both comfortable with what they're doing on both sides of the court. Well, as you say, that Braveman just said, let's switch for a second. <laughs> like right now, right? <laughs> say, not uncoiling on the return of serve. Oshiro's forehand into the net. So it's a lead here for Fudge and Braveman in the first of this second game.
Megan Fudge with the speed up, well placed, well timed, gets a point. Yeah, longest point of, or longest rally of the match so far. But also, too, is that Fudge and Braverman are moving so well together. It's so difficult to find a hole. But Oshiro and Noblet aren't, aren't able to really put any pressure on it. If you watch how much movement between the two sides, it's Nobler and Oshiro that are continually scrambling right now. Good speed up right there initially from Braverman, knowing it really wasn't going to be a winner. It was about 50% speed up, but she got a pop up there for Fudge to put away. That time, Nobler getting on top of it, putting the ball at the feet of Fudge. Can't get it back over the net, so pushes him onto their second serve. Braverman with it. That ball just a little long. So it'll be another point here. And just like that, it was a very tight first few exchanges. A few scoreless side outs, stayed at ones for a minute. And now, just systematically, Braverman and Fudge extending this lead. Put together a 6-0 run now. Have Fudge and Braverman. Tough pick up there for Nobler. Braverman's ball catching the net court, adding some backspin. Oh, just a clinic right there of holding the kitchen line by Jill Braverman. She was not going to let that ball bounce and not going to allow Heather Nobler to get back to the kitchen line right there. Great pressure. That's the second time Nobler has gone down the line at Fudge, and she's come out with the winner. What she's doing is she's continuing to find that right hip and adjusting each time Fudge moves or slides to try to clear that backhand. That time Oshiro gets a paddle on it, but pops it up. Braverman with the authoritative finish. Well, a good speed up right there at the right hip of Oshiro. Oshiro was leaning middle, but she goes right hip and jams her up and gets the pop up. Oh. The two resets by Jill Braverman right there kept them in the point, allowed Fudge to re-establish her footing. Out. And just a nice easy block back out wide past Oshiro. That time Oshiro getting big, putting that away with her forehand. But it was a good adjustment from her too because she didn't think that she was going to finish it on the backhand. So she hits the backhand and then slides to the middle to finish with the forehand. So they need a bunch of those constructed points in a row here. Oh, that was upper right pectoral <laughs> major Braverman. muscle. Like clavicle, like right clavicle. <laughs> oh, no, it, there was a little more, there was a little more airbag in that one. But. 171. I, I, I liked it. I like Ashiro was is starting to be a little bit more aggressive now on the left side. Oh, was it? Time. No blur with the backhand, two-handed two backhand into the net, but. So what I'm liking right now from Oshiro and Nobler is that last point, they went middle a lot. And so pinch that middle, 
force Fudge and Braverman to try and fight over that. Oh, and that is a Oshiro. great poach from Bobby Oshiro. Oshiro stepping in the forehand. Well placed, well timed. Catches Braverman and Fudge off guard. Another look. Yeah, Oshiro timed it perfectly right there. Loaded up on the legs. Good explosive movement. It's tough again. That's almost a bait ball for Megan Fudge because she plays such good defense. She wants you to speed that up so she can play defense and get you to pop one up. Seven two one. The score for Fudge's serve. Good attempt at a reset there from Oshiro, but Fudge, just a lot of power, a lot of pop. Gets her to hit that one out. Away as soon as she hit that fudge set up for that overhead. Well, fudge almost missed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was literally painted the back of the baseline. Yeah. And that's been a consistent spot for. Fudge and Braveman is finding that left foot of Nobla when she is on the right. Like you said, Dom, she's strong with the forehand roll, so they're keeping it away from that. But Nobla is allowing that ball to get back behind the foot as well. So tough to pick up. Now it's a match point opportunity here for Fudge and Braverman, and they get it done. 11-2, 11-2, how they win both their games to punch their ticket to women's doubles semifinals here at the APP Vlasic Classic, Delray Beach. We'll be right back. Less is more, less is less beer. Nothing brings us together like Eggland's best eggs. We love the taste, always so fresh and delicious, plus superior nutrition. For us, it's eggs any style, as long as they're the best. Eggland's best. Fudge and Jill Braverman, you see the around the post there from Braverman. Stepping up, taking the middle. And good pressure and good adjustments from Fudge and Braverman. Watch for them coming through in the backside of this draw. We're going to throw it down to Dominic Catalano, who's courtside for our Franklin post-match interview.
Uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with more men's and women's action here from the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach. Need to sell tickets for an event? From Sports Illustrated's official ticketing platform, introducing Box Office. Manage ticketing for sports, festivals, fundraisers, and more. Paid or free. And we go beyond the barcode. Introducing Super Ticket. Super Tickets are secured by blockchain technology and transform into exclusive digital content, promotions, and rewards between the event and guests. Cheaper, better, simpler, more secure. Sports Illustrated Tickets. Partner with us for your next event. by Gamma. Play to live, live to play. Skechers Pickleball. Experience comfort that performs. And Humana, official healthcare partner of the APP Tour. Five gold medal matches coming up this afternoon. It's the Chase APP Miami Pickleball Open. For Ryan We're going to see what Dylan Frazier and Tyra Black can do. Black and, and Frazier the opportunity to go on the attack and be aggressive as well. He and Hurricane Tyra Black capture the gold medal. Johnson and Frazier so familiar with each other. Chad, we've talked about matches in which it's consistency versus athleticism. This one, consistency versus consistency. What is going to be the difference maker? A lot of fun was had in Miami, and here we are in Delray Beach. Next, we head to Cincinnati. This is the APP upcoming schedule, and then end of May, Zimmer Biomet New York City Open. Really excited for that one. And then we head west. You guys get to come to my side of the country for a change. The Southern California Open over Fourth of July weekend. Like one of my favorite places in Newport Beach. Absolutely love it there. It's going to be so much fun. So join us. We hope you do. For some of these events down the road, visit the app.global for more information about the upcoming schedule and where you can find us. Next up, we've got some men's doubles action for you right here on Championship Court. Gabe Tardio and Andre Diascu are going to take center stage. We'll break down this matchup when we come back. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. 
They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. To be clear, Fulfill is a protein bar, not a candy bar. Don't let its creamy, chocolatey goodness confuse you or the fact that you hide them from anyone with a sweet tooth. You saw nothing. I saw nothing. Fulfill. We swear it's a protein bar. The APP is sponsored by LS, official on-court apparel of the APP Tour. CND Nets, the highest quality nets made in the USA. And Turvis, the original insulated tumbler. Andre Diescu and Gabe Tardio are going to be playing each other tomorrow in mixed doubles, but today, they're partnered up in men's doubles. Taking a look at Andre Diescu getting warmed up. One of the winningest players here on the APP Tour. And then he's partnered up with Gabe Tardio, 18 years old, based out of Jupiter, Florida. So excited to see these two playing together here in men's doubles. They are taking on two players relatively new to playing here on championship court. Zach Park and Jorge Nunez. Jorge, you see... Walking across the court there, Zach, double-checking the pickleballs. So excited for this matchup. Andre and Gabe playing together. Yep. Yeah, Andre, for, yeah, Andre yeah, and Gabe that's playing what I was together. Gonna say. So <laughs> Gabe and Andre, I want you to break down what you see from both their games, how you're going to – what you're excited about seeing them play together. Well, Gabe and Andre are just consistent. They're going to keep the ball in play. They're not going to attack if they don't need to. They're going to kind of lull you to death, <laughs> and we'll see how – Nunez and Parks can handle that. Nunez and Parks coming out of the qualifier, and so moving on to the round of 16 where they took out Edin Lika and William Sobek in three, 11-8 in game three. So nice win for both Parks and Nunez. A little flick there from Tardio, sails long. Yeah, I got a little lucky there. The ball kind of held up in the wind there for Tardio, so he's hitting that fully extended tough roll and tough to keep that one down, but don't expect him to miss too many more pop-ups. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that one was off the net. Yeah, that's tough. It's like adjusting fastball to change up. Hard to do on the fly. Nice spot right there from Nunez, right at the body of Andre Deescu. And if you're going to go anywhere on him, Chad, you and Time I have up. said that Time up. a bunch of times. Don't let him extend his arms. Tie him up on the inside. Center mass. Around the post from Deescu, well defended by Nunez. Yo, these are the fun matchups to see right now. Parks and Nunez, they, they have nothing to lose. Nope. Right? All of the pressure is on Tadio and Diascu. And Parks and Nunez are going out there. They're taking their chances right now with the speed-ups. They're playing fairly clean and, and consistent right now. So, yo, keep with this intensity and put the pressure on Tadio and Diascu while you can
some good reach by Diascu. Tardio there with the overhead winner. Well, jams up Parks just enough to where he can't really do much with it. Great job there from Tardio and Diascu. Good patience. Oh, get out. No way he got that. Yeah, he did. Diascu with a few <laughs> leaping strides across the court to get it, but Parks. Two, well, yeah. Two oh, a few. Ten. A few. Two strides. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two strides. One, two, 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 two ten foot bounds here, right here. Here it is. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> and the slide. Diascu, one of the taller players here on the APP tour, standing well over six feet tall and wingspan that is constantly giving his opponents some headaches. His dad played for the Romanian national basketball team. That's not coming back right there. The second overhead. First one from Tardio on the lob from Parks, but then Dasku with the finish. Great speed up there. A lot of pace on that return from Tardio. And third goes long. Fourth goes long, excuse me. This is a game plan for Parks and Nunez right now. Is they're literally going to try and wear Deescu down? Yeah, I mean, right now he's moving back and forth and yeah. breaking down. Unfortunately, it's very hard to do with Deescu because he's so used to and he's so conditioned to cover so so much court. Oh, Nunez got to pull the trigger right there. That ball's up at his waist. On his forehand, got to pull that trigger and go right at that body like Parks did earlier. 5-2-2 two, two for Diascu, sir. A couple of errors creeping in now for Parks and Nunez. A good timeout right here. Not before Diascu and Tadio go on a six-point run. Parks and Nunez had a 2 nothing lead to start this first game in our best Two out of three to 11 to decide who moves on here in our men's pro doubles matchup at the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach. But then Tardio and Diescu, you talk about just their consistency and how they stay in the points and they lull and they lull and they lull and then they strike. But it's, it's like I'm sitting there saying, well, that's what Parks and Nunez are trying to wear Diescu down, but could it just be Diescu trying to wear both of them <laughs> down at the same time going... I'll stay in this well, with you all day, and that's the, that's his strength, though. Yeah, we know he's not going to speed it up. Right? He's not going to speed up a ball prematurely. He is going to wait for the right ball to speed up. He will stay in that dink with you, and I think that's what Nunez and Parks are trying to do is just say, hey, let's just try and wear him down, but it may be on the other foot right here is Deescu's just wearing them down. One of the things that makes Deescu so dangerous is his consistency across partnerships, across divisions here in pickleball. He just has such great strategy, such pickleball wits, if you will, that very good, very good game player in addition to his skill. Nice reach in there from Tadio. Good adjustment from earlier on where he missed a couple of those floating balls. Big overhead from Diascu and right in the point of contention. So it'll be a side out. 6 2 1 for cardio serve. And again, Diascu with the pop up puts it back at the feet of Nunez with some authority. 7 2 1. 
That time, Parks catching Diascu in transition. Slides it under. Oh, oh gosh. my goodness, <laughs> Diascu all over the place on that point and then finishes it off strong with the forehand. Take another look at this. It just comes across. back, right? I'm pretty <laughs> sure that ball was going out too, but he's coming back in the court. Ball going across the body. Parks not able to get out of the way of it. Readiness there from Tardio gets his paddle up. Well, you're trying to test them, but again, Tardio's hands lightning quick, and his paddle's out in front, ready for that speed up. Little pop up rare. there from Diascu. That was rare from Diascu right there, fully extended. Didn't nine get two. anything on it, but yeah, like you just said, that's a that's a <laughs> nine two speed up. Try to just flick something. Oh, this time he adds a second hand. Now, go ahead. Say typically, it. You know exactly who we're gonna say. Typically, that's his tell, right? As soon yep. as he adds the second hand, he's gonna speed it up. However, you still have to try and get a paddle on. It. Yeah. <laughs> and again. See what he does though well with it. Even though he puts one that middle, second one hand line. on it, right? You don't know if he's going line, body, or middle, or he can roll it cross court too. But typically, he won't roll that. It's typically going to be a speed up of one of three spots. But ask him if he cares that nope. you know that it's coming. He nope. does say it's one he, thing to know it's coming. Not. It's another thing to stop it. He, he does not. But, again, too, and we always talk about it with a speed up being a one-two punch. Diascu's not doing that to hit the winner. He's doing it to set up the next ball. So it doesn't matter if his opponents know it's coming. So one game point defended there from Parks and Nunez. Second serve, though, here. Tardio with another opportunity. And they get it done. Andre Diascu, Gabe Tardio, just clinical in that first game to take the 11-2 victory over Parks. And Nunez, game two, when we come back to Delray Beach. Damn. No, since I've been using uh, Leo Rubber, I, I've had way less problem on my AT band and hip. It has been really a game changer for me, so I highly recommend it to everyone. That's what makes it so different. The whole idea about balanced compression, it improves your blood flow, reduces your fatigue. At the end of the day, you feel so much better. I feel comfortable. I feel supported. I feel that I can train harder, train longer, recover faster, and feel supported while I'm playing. And that's so crucial for me, especially in singles when I'm trying to play against the youngest. I'm not the youngest out there, but I try and play against the youngest. A typical insurance. You're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to healthcare. Nothing makes a gathering great like Eggland's best eggs. They're just so delicious. With better nutrition, too. For us, it's eggs any style. 
as long as they're the best. Agland's best. Game one went the way of Gabe Tardio and Andre Diascu, Zach Park, Jorge Nunez. Going to have to figure something out here in game two if they want to push us to a game three. Zach Parks and Jorge Nunez at the bottom of your screen there. It's going to be Gabe Tardio with the serve. Oh, heads up. Well, Chad, you called it during the break. That was an 11-0 run for Deescu and Tardio after going down 2-0. I think they figured it out. <laughs> yeah, the I mean the intensity shifted just a little bit. That's right there what I want to see Nunez do a little more of. Reach in with that big lefty forehand. He's tall, long, he's got some length. Reach in with that and try to put some pressure. Great reset there by Parks and Nunez, but Tardio just too consistent with the overhead. Well, he did right there, like you asked him. But I did, just, hit, did. just hit the wrong spot. Right. <laughs> oh, Parks was sitting on the speed up from Tardio. He knew it was coming. He knew he had one spot he needed to defend. It was down the line but he couldn't put the counter away. I think Nunez looked up to see where Daescu was right there. Daescu started to charge. That ball, a little wide. So it's a 3 0 lead. Tardio and Diascu. Good leave there. I don't mind the hands battle there for Nunez, but he just got too big on the last one. If he keeps that pedal out in front and just punches that ball back and gets it down towards the shins of Diascu, he's going to come out on top of that. But again, got too big with that forehand. And now it's time out here from Nunez and Parks. They trail by four here in this second game. Best two out of three to 11 with Tardio and Diascu taking first game 11-2. Got to figure out some strategic changes here. So, Dom, you talked a little bit about what you wanted to see wasn't the right place, though, from that last exchange. So where do you want them to place the ball against Tardio and Diascu? Well, if Nunez is going to speed up, he or Parks did it once earlier where it was right at the body of Diascu and jammed him up. That's where you got to go. Chad and I always hit on center mass, mm -hmm. right? Nothing personal, just business here. We're here to win money, and, win, and, and this is a living for these players. If you hit someone right in the chest, hey, Sorry about it, but is that's my it point. Is. I mean, I've got one strategy. Just go and tie Andre Dyeski's shoelaces together. And <laughs> Something. <you know. laughs> Again, the movement. So it's the, it's just the movement from Dyeski that is creating a little bit of pressure for Nunez. He's he's trying to look up and find where Dyeski is right as he's making contact. Tadio Sog and Miss and, and Daescu still almost got it. I think it might have went over if if, if uh, Tardio wasn't in the way. Hit Tardio in the left shoulder. Wow, well, that's 17 straight points yeah. for Daescu and Tadio. Oh, great, great pretty. shake and bake there from Deescu and Tardio. Tardio read it so well in the middle. 
Look at that body position. Splits the center service line with his feet. Nowhere for Nunez and Parks to go. Sold it with the body. Again, the movement of Diascu, and then the coverage there from Tadio selling it with the body like he's going to roll it back cross court. Just pushes it through the middle. That time, well placed ball by Nunez. That was pretty. Behind Tadio. Yeah, Diascu's drive just set up a little too high right here. They're just pulling the trigger right now, going, hey, we're going to pressure you. Can you stop it? Oh, throwing it up in the wind. Oh, change of strategy there. I'd rather have Nunez as that lob came back. They just couldn't get much on it, and he was back Rip in the transition. Rip it. Rip that forehand right back at him. Good adjustment. Now we're back Ooh. to a little bit of pace. All right, I'm, all su right. I'm surprised that Eskew didn't go with a second forehand there. He gave it up to Tadio as he was moving back into the court. Spot, but just misses that. Can't get the shape on it he wanted, so. Well, uh -huh. de defense makes you do a little too much. And that's exactly what that was. Didn't want the ball to come back at all. Wow. <laughs> Great. Teosco trying to get back. I think if he leaves that for Tardio, Tardio was there because Nunez went back to the same spot. Nunez needed to go cross court with that. 091 for Nunez, sir. Ooh. Pox had him right there. Just let that ball get too close to the body. Who flips it just a little bit long. They stopped the run. Hey, they stopped 20, the 20-0 run. The 20 run. <laughs> there we go. On the board. Nah. And another one. Ooh. There's the spot right there. I think Diascu tried to headbutt that one back. <laughs> but again, like you were talking about, Dom, Hitting into the movement and hitting into the center mass. Daisuke, we already talked about how big his reach is. It's difficult for him to get jammed up. So, all right. Little run here now by Parks and Nunez. 392 for Parks serve. So it's a replay because as that ball clipped and hit the tape and rolled over, it came down and hit the bar. And so that is a replay by rule. Melody Woodson, our lead referee here on championship court. Oh, that's so oh. dirty. Tricky. Filthy change of pace. You see a very big 6'4 <laughs> guy coming at you with a huge forehand. You're trying to back up as far as you can, and then he just gently drops that over. Good placement there, though. Nunez going. Another look here. Excuse me, Parks going cross court. Yeah, good step over there from Parks. Protects Nunez as he's coming forward. 
So certainly a long way to go for Nunez and Parks, but three in a row with the scoreless side out. That ball looked like it was wide. Yeah. That was a great get a challenge. We got to get a challenge? Maybe. I mean, why no. not? Right why now, not? you get a free time out. I mean, use these. Yeah, yeah I mean, they'll challenge it. So they're going to they're gonna challenge it here in game number two. Anything can happen. It befuddles us that they, like, <laughs> they like debate challenge. Like, are you, you befuddled and bewildered if, by the fact if, that they are not using a yes, challenge? Yes, 100%. Because <laughs> I am you, amused by this conversation. <laughs> if you think for a second that it is possibly in and they called it out or vice versa, use it. Yep. That's what it's here for. So let's break uh, down. I'm pretty it sure is that one's out. I was wrong, Riss, yesterday, though. It is one of the newer rules here on the APP Tour. So an opportunity for Diescu and Tardio to challenge this ball because the call ended the point. So you can only Correct. challenge if the call ended the point. The review has and come you back. Have the ball was out. The point oh. stands. We resume play at 4-9-1. That was Take quick. What? It was Receiving quick right team. there. That's great work by our referee and crew and on Isabel, the call. Isabel Gauthier, our video referee. So you heard our head referee tell Tardio and Diascu they have two remaining challenges. What that actually means, they have unlimited challenges, but because they lost they this have, one. They have two wrong challenges remaining. They have two remaining. wrong <laughs> challenges remaining until you get assessed a technical warning. Then escalates from there. Ooh, escalates. <laughs> We got the thesaurus and the dictionary yeah. out in the in the booth right now between these two. Tayescu unleashing all the frustration from these five <laughs> points that he and Tardio have allowed in this second game and that was well, big overheads. Well good spot. He had both Nunez and Park splitting to the sideline. He went right down the middle. Oh. Oh. Goodness, oh Diescu with some impressive resets, but Parks and Nunez why? finding a rhythm. Why do we? Why are we surprised? Why do we keep getting surprised? I don't, I don't surprised? know. This, uh, that one almost like, hit him in the face, and he picks it off of his shoelaces. Why do we get surprised at the gifts that this man gets back? Because he does it every single day. Good duck. Missing, <laughs> missing long. Tadio didn't even pick the paddle up right there. That's a nice run here from Nunez and Parks. This is a game here now. Yeah, that's a pressure dink right there from Nunez. He pushed that really hard to the middle. And Dayescu had to choose whether to take that out of the air or back up. He just decides to take it out of the air, but comes up a little short. Oh, the uh, ATP from Parks just can't put the shape on it. Didn't didn't get outside that one. Difficult to shape when you're hitting from behind the ball. You see it right here. It doesn't get the paddle to the outside of the ball. So despite the run, it's match point opportunity here for Tardio and Diescu. And that's how they put it away. Diescu, Tardio, weather a little bit of a storm here from Parks and Nunez in game two to take it 11-6. They're moving on in our men's pro doubles here in Delray Beach. We'll hear from the duo when we come back. from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. 
That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. It's less beer. Cut tire. And it's Andre Diascu and Jake Cardio. Moving on to the quarterfinals, capped off by a 20 to 0 run. Banning from game one, game two, just too much pressure, too much control, and the big man doing his thing in the middle. We're going to throw it down to Dominic Catalano, who's courtside with our Franklin post-match interview. All right, Gabe, I'll start with you. You guys go down 2-0 in game one, then you go on an 11-0 run. What was the difference that put you guys over the top in game one? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we had a rough start. But then we were like really disciplined and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we find like a strategy that like we would go like Andre Dink all day to the back and we would attack metal because they were com getting confused in the middle with the, the lefty. So yeah, that was the strategy. But yeah, no, a little more disciplined and being aggressive at the same time. All right, and Andre, it looked like they were going to you a lot. How do you stay in that and stay focused knowing you're going to see a steady diet cross court there? Uh, it's actually good, you know. It's the first first match of the day, so it's good to build some rhythm. I like when I'm when I'm targeted there. I thought I did a really good job until about 9-0 in the second game, and then yeah, went off a little bit. But like I said, I mean, I I enjoy hit, having to hit a lot of balls. I like the rhythm, uh, so uh, it was good for me for sure. All right, well, congratulations, boys. Moving on to the quarterfinals, we'll take a break here. We'll have our first semifinal women's pro doubles on Championship Court at the APP Vlasic Classic in Delray Beach. Story Sebring here with Vlasic Pickles, and we're putting the pickle in pickleball. In pickleball, the term pickled is when you don't score any points in a game. This grilled Vlasic pickle recipe will score you all the points. Slice them in half long ways. Here are your pickles. Put those babies on the grill. Now we're going to make our ranch. Roll in crushed potato chips. Winner's grilled pickles. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. APP is sponsored by SI Tickets, official ticketing partner of the APP Tour. Eglin's Best, better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. And Aura Organic, rooted in science, powered by nature.
typical insurance? You're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to healthcare. Nothing brings us together like Eggland's best eggs. We love the taste, always so fresh and delicious, plus superior nutrition. For us, it's eggs any style, as long as they're the best. Eggland's best. The APP is sponsored by Yola. For the champion in you. Humana, Weird. official healthcare partner of the APP Tour. And Fat Tire, crisp, bright, easy drinking. Welcome back to the APP Classic Classic Delray Beach Women's Pro Doubles semifinal action coming your way. Simone Jarjing and Allison Harris pairing up for this weekend's tournament. They won a gold together last year when they partnered up in New Jersey. But the really fun story here is that Allison actually partially credits at least Simone and Chad for becoming a professional pickleball player. So we will get into that a little bit more, but first let's introduce you to their opponents, Georgia Johnson and Millie Rain. Millie won women's doubles gold in Punta Gorda with Bobby Oshiro, and then Georgia Johnson already locked in a spot for herself on championship Sunday tomorrow. and. Trying to make sure she brings home a little bit more hardware here from Delray Beach. Millie Rain going to get it started with the serve. Georgia, authoritative yes. overhead finish. Yes, it was. And that's a tough ball right there for Jarjing to just slow up and drop. It's a good drop if she can keep it a little closer to the net. She did not keep it as close to the net as she would have liked, and Rain came in. Punish that speed up. Oh, yeah, right off the tape and into the VIP section as Millie Rain fighting that ball off of her face. So Allison Harris, oh, we'll take another look at this. Fights that off. Just a little self-preservation there. Again, Georgia Johnson with a big forehand steps in. Takes control of the point. Yeah, a good job and a good read there from Georgia Johnson to step in and take control in the middle. Around the post from Millie Rain. Defended by Jarjing, but can't get it back in the... Back and bounce. Yeah, she just didn't set her right, angle right. early enough here as you watch the ATP defense from Jarjin. Good call to hit that ball. Looked like it was getting shaped yep. back in. Yep. A good counter right there off the forehand of Allison Harris. 1 0 2, the score for Rain serve. Watch that right there. So Allison Harris, what she does right there is it's the right job to try and reach and get that ball out of the air, but she dropped her back left foot and it pulls her body away from 
the ball. And just long as we can check this out, watch Allison Harris's footwork right there. You see how her left foot slides back, and it allow, doesn't allow her full extension. She's got to keep both those feet up at the kitchen line. Jarjing and Harris forcing the side out here. In a little early hole. So like I mentioned, Harris and Jarjing have a really fun history together because it was a clinic put on in Nashville where Allison Harris was living and working as a wedding photographer. And then she came into a clinic that Simone and Chad were putting on, brought in actually by her friends to get some opinions. Do you think I can be a pro pickleball player? <laughs> uh, the answer was yes. Oh, nice job right there. And here's the issue with the last two balls from Jarjing and Harris for Rain and Johnson. The wind is at the back of Rain and Johnson, and those drops are dying in the kitchen where Rain and Johnson think they're going to be able to get that out of the air, and they don't, both off the edge guard. Oh, Jarjing coming across trying to speed that ball up. I don't mind that at all. She's just got to roll that a little bit more into the body of Georgia Johnson. Pushes him onto their second serve. Jarjing with it. Oh, paints the sideline on that serve. Rain can't get it back over the net. Ties up. Well, if you think that was an accident, you are mistaken. That is a spot that Jarjing hit perfectly. And reason that she hit that spot. She knew that Georgia Johnson and Millie Rain were going to try and uncoil out of the stack. So she pulls Rain as far to the sideline as she can to disrupt the timing. Think left a little bit short, so side out here, but just like that, 4 0 run for Jarjing and Harris. And they find themselves in the lead for the first time in this first game of our women's double semifinals. A beautiful spot in the pull of the trigger right there from Georgia Johnson with the two-handed backhand. Holds it on her paddle till the last second. Beautifully done. Here's Jarjing telling Harris to go, and she did the forehand, though, sailing long. Just a little deep, so 5-4-1 the score for Johnson's serve. Nice speed up initially from Jarjing, knowing it's going to come back from rain, but she can't get much on it. Allison Harris there for the put away. Millie Rain with the serve. That whole point set up by the Georgia Johnson third shot drop. We talk about some of the best third shot droppers on the female side. Georgia Johnson being one of them. So aggressive with her third shot drop. And she has the ability to just speed it up with such authority, pick her spots so well, like she did there, to get her and her teammate a 7-4 lead. That's so aggressive on a backhand dink there from Jarjing. Pulling Georgia Johnson all the way to the sideline, getting her off balance. Slow that run from Rain and Johnson down. Oh, the pressure put on from Allison Harris by Allison Harris from the get go. Her and Jarjing in rhythm right now at that point. Oh, 
<laughs> Simone Jarjing again. She likes that spot on the sideline. Well, Georgia Johnson got crossed up and still hits a great reset right there. She gets low enough and gets on top of that frack, which is a forehand backhand combo. Beautiful lob right there from Rain and Johnson. Six seven two, two Jarjing with the serve. Rain right into the body of Jarjing. And so it's a side out here, but again, not before Jarjing and Harris bring us back to a one point game. the pressure on that entire point, Don. Well, not allowing the ball to drop or bounce, taking the ball out of the air, it's continuing done. to put pressure on Harrison Jarjing in the transition area. Really rain, big forehand right at the feet of Allison Harris, out of reach. Well, big combo right there is she goes right at Jarjing with the first and then gets a higher ball that she's able to get on top of right there. ready for that speed up from Harris and sets up a game point opportunity, but not before timeout is called on the court by Jarjing and Harris. Well, the difference on that right there is when Georgia Johnson is speeding up, she's ready for the next ball. On that speed up right there, Harris speeds it up, but she's not ready for the counter from Georgia Johnson. So she's late and goes in the net with that. Every ball that you're hitting and trying to speed up right now, with the skill level of the players on the other side of the net, in this point, at this time, in the game in 2024, you need to be prepared for every single ball to come back. If you think you're hitting a put-away, it's not a put-away until it gets behind them and hits that back wall. You need to be prepared for that next ball to come back. And on the last one, Allison Harris was not. Mm. So Johnson and Rain with a game point on their paddle when we come back out of this timeout. So out of the timeout, what do you want to see Jarjing and Harris do to defend this second game point? Well, right now you need to force Millie Rain and Georgia Johnson to play a ball off the bounce. Right now they're getting too many balls out of the air, able to speed up and be aggressive. You need to force the ball to bounce to Rain and Johnson right now and force them into a dink battle. I'd like to see Allison Harris get into a cross-court battle with Millie Rain. She moves the ball well enough inside and out, and she has a nice forehand roll. So if she can get into that, I think they can get back into this. See right there again, it was Georgia Johnson taking those balls out of the air, AJ. And it gets her and her partner, Millie Rain, the win here in game one of our women's doubles semifinal number one at Delray Beach. Game two, when we come back to Florida. third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to health care.
Nothing brings us together like Eggland's best eggs. We love the taste, always so fresh and delicious, plus superior nutrition. For us, it's eggs any style, as long as they're the best. Eggland's best. The APP is sponsored by Yola, for the champion in you. Humana, official healthcare partner of the APP Tour. And Fat Tire. Crisp, bright, easy drinking. This week's Partake Community Hero is Daniela Niss. As a member of the Delray Beach Pickleball Club, Daniela and her team became actively involved in the Achievement Center, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Free Pickleball Clinic, and even assisted in finding a match for the Gift of Life organization. Daniela is known for her passion of pickleball and is even quoted as saying, Pickleball is life. Thank you to Daniela for everything you do. Yeah, Daniela Niss, known her for years and years. Taylor Niss, her daughter, married Brandon Hubschman, who is a close friend, and his twin sister, Brittany Hubschman, works with us here on the APP Tour and in Intersport. So it's the pickleball community staying close and staying close knit. Much better point construction, though, from Jarjing and Harris. They made the ball bounce, got what they were looking for. I like the step in in the middle from Jarjing. Just couldn't put it away, but I like that from them early on here in game two. Oh, they'll take that. <laughs> Winner off the tape right there. Harris with a big smile on her face. Not how they drew it up, but absolutely. We'll take the force to the second serve. How many times can you cross someone up and they still reset it? Georgia Johnson got crossed up and fooled three times in that point and still hit perfect resets. And it, <laughs> somebody charging with some nice words for her, but the Georgia gives it right back to her with a serve into the net. Maybe she was feeling bad. I doubt it, though. Highly, highly unlikely. Yes. Zero one one. Allison Harris with the serve. Nice speed up off her shoe tops from Jarjing. It didn't really surprise Rain, but Rain didn't couldn't really do much with it. And then advantage to Harris and Jarjing to even this up at one apiece. Some great oh. gets there by Harris in the middle of that point, but Johnson with the put away. And Jarjing stepping over in the middle to try and protect oh, Harris. So she was way off the sideline. Great oh. counter by Allison Harris right there. She charged the kitchen line and takes matters into her own hands. So for the first time in this match, it is Harris and Jarjing with the lead, trying to extend it here. Great spot there. Two-handed backhand from Harris. Past Johnson and inside. Well, watch this good read by Harris as she comes up on the beautiful, aggressive third shot drop from Jarjing, forcing Johnson to pop it up. Harris comes in and puts it away. Again, Allison Harris, forehand. Beautiful cross-court winner. 4-1-2, Jarjing with the serve. And a missed, missed serve there from Jarjing. Rarity. Oh, 
Oh, change of pace. Millie Rain trying to lob Jarjing, but Simone gets up for it, and then Harris, good job redirecting that ball. Hits the sideline. On to their second serve. Simone looking for the cross court. Dink and can't get it over the net, so it'll be a point here for Rain and Johnson. Beautiful <laughs> job right there from both those ladies, Allison Harrison, Simone Jarjing, Harris off balance, and then Jarjing just sets her feet, plays a perfect reset. And Harris just off balance there numerous times. Great job, Jarjing, up for the overhead winner. And one of the things with Harris is that I feel like throughout the last year as we've gotten to know her more on the APP tour, she is better off balance on those resets than she has a right to be because they almost always seem to come back. Yes, and unfortunately right there, she's on balance and she hits her serve <laughs> out. So maybe you're exactly right, AJ. <laughs> There it is, making them play the ball off the bounce. I'm shocked, no timeout here from Rain and Johnson. Trailing by four here in the second game of our women's doubles semifinals. Spot in the gold medal match on the line for these teams. Nice attack from Allison Harris. And now they call the timeout, so one point later than you thought it was warranted, yes. but a five point lead here by Harris and Jarjing. Certainly, some of the veterans here, especially Simone Jarjing. She has been around this game for quite some time and has coached many of these players. And last night, Dom, really cool opportunity for the APP to honor Simone Jarjing. Yeah, I was lucky enough to be able to MC the awards last night. It was a absolute blast with all these players and both Harris and Jarjing earning awards. Jarjing, the top female player of the year and also winning the Icon Award. And then Allison Harris, was the APP most improved female on tour. And so both Simone Jarjing and Allison Harris taking home some hardware off the court last night at the awards banquet. And it was an absolute blast. That's my our second time doing it. I have emceed both of them and absolutely love it. For some odd reason last night, CJ Klinger turned it into a roast of me last <laughs> night where him and William Sobeck took their jabs at me. I absolutely love it. have known both of those kids since they were 9, 10, 11 years old, and to see what they are in the game now is absolutely amazing. A lot of fun at the APP Awards last night. Stay tuned to the broadcast and socials for more behind the scenes. From what was a cool night celebrating a lot of really important people you see on the court and ones that you rarely see here on the APP tour, but make everything happen. Great call there by Simone Jarjing and out of the timeout, no rhythm lost from Harrison Jarjing. No, none at all. Again, making the ball bounce on Rain and Johnson. That has been the difference maker here. We talked about it pre-game, excuse me, pre this game <laughs> what they needed to do and they are executing it perfectly have themselves just two points away from taking game two forcing us to a decisive game three charging with a serve and harris just misses <laughs> skips the ball skips a little odd off the edge guard so it will be a side out here johnson and rain with a chance to try and cut this seven point lead
Oh, the around the post. Harris defends, wow. and then Jarjing with the finish. But great job by Millie Rain covering in the middle on the first defense of the ATP from Johnson. But she does need to slide back, and she does, but Johnson couldn't recover fast enough to get back in play. Big swing and miss there from Georgia Johnson. All sails deep, and so out of the timeout. Two points for Harris and Jarjing before Rain and Johnson can get the ball back on their side. And then no points added for Rain and Johnson. And instead, it's Jarjing and Harris with a chance to put themselves in a game point opportunity. Oh, Jarjing! <laughs> With the reset, that somehow hits the sideline. Oh, the celebration, though, after the beautiful <laughs> reset to the sideline was classic from Simone Jarjing to Allison Harris. So it's a game point opportunity here. And Harris, Jarjing can force us to a game three. And they do. Simone Jarjing steps into the middle, finds the feet of Georgia Johnson. And they take game two, 11 to two. Harris and Jarjing say, we're not done yet. Let's play another game, shall we, to decide who punches their ticket to the women's doubles gold medal match here at the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach. We'll be right back. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game. Because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Fulfill is a protein bar, not a candy bar. Don't let its creamy, chocolatey goodness confuse you, or the fact that you hide them from anyone with a sweet tooth. You saw nothing. I saw nothing. Fulfill. We swear it's a protein bar. And it all comes down to this, to decide who is going to earn their spot in the women's doubles gold medal match here at the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach. Millie Rain, Georgia Johnson take game one, 11-6. And then it's Simone Jorging and Allison Harris who bounce back with authority in game two to take it 11-2. And so now it comes down to this game three. Millie Rain getting us started with the serve. So, Dom, before we get too far into this game, what's the biggest adjustment you want to see Rain and Johnson make here in this third? Rain and Johnson need to lean in, take balls out of the air. Jarjing and Harris need to force them to play it off the bounce. That's the difference maker right here for me. And then again, it's it's that when you're going to speed up, if Harris and Jarjing do speed up, be ready for the counter. Mm. Rain and Johnson are ready for everyone to come back. Jarjing playing that off the ground and you might think that that's a disadvantage. It's not. Simone Jarjing, one of the best players on the APP in playing from the ground once she gets there but just can't get the paddle on that so pushes them to their second serve. A little 
little premature on the pull of the trigger right there from Harris. It was just a little too low. If that ball's maybe a couple inches higher, yes, where she can get a little more spin on it. Good leave there, Simone Jorging and Allison Harris getting rain to pop that ball up. Second serve. Jarjing can't get the height on that cross court dink she was looking for. So it's going to be another point here for Rain and Johnson. A little overzealous right there. So it'll be a side out. Simone Jarjing and Allison Harris with a chance to put themselves on the board here in game three. Oh, Jarjing coming in. in, winning that firefight right there. Beautifully done. She was not going to be beaten here. She just kept moving forward and attacking more and more. And again, finding a spot behind Jarjing, or behind Johnson and Rain, excuse me. That puts just enough question in their minds of if it's going to land in. You want to see the spirit of pickleball right now? Our next semifinal match is... Humberg and Barr versus Fudge and Braverman. Whew. I'll finish this statement after this point. The four of them are sitting in VIP at a table together just talking. <laughs> <laughs> they're about to go to battle. It's and all they're, all, they're, they're all just drinking some water, having some food, sitting in VIP, it's all with each other at one table. You're all friends until you get between the lines. Exactly. Nothing friendly about that one. Georgia Johnson, big step in. Forehand winner. And nice finish right there from Johnson again, taking that ball up at the height as you see the four ladies right there getting ready for their next matchup. That's going to be a really good one. Some fantastic pickleball heading your way here on this beautiful Saturday from Delray Beach. And look no further but than the match on hand. Exactly. This one has been incredible. It's been a game of adjustments. It's been Harris and Jarjing who have made the better adjustments after game one. We'll see if Johnson and Rain can dial it in here. They do have a slight edge. Nice drive from Georgia Johnson, but issue with that one was the return from Harris was very high. And so what that did was pop up to Johnson. As she hits that forehand, she's able to get on top of it, create some dip over the net. Big serve from Johnson, and Jarjing can't get the return back over the net immediately. She wants a timeout as Johnson and Rain have a little three-point lead here in game number three. Curious, Dom, how, what do you think is the, is the reason, right? We always talk about how many points do you let a, an opponent get before you call the timeout. Jarjing and Harris decide to call the timeout here. What do you like okay, about that call? Okay, so right here. So Chad and I typically talk about not burning a timeout at 5 mm -hmm. when your changing ends at 6. I might change my thought process right now with the video review, right? Right. You have three video challenges that you can use as timeouts. If you think a call is close right now, even if I think, okay, maybe it was out, but it was close enough, I'm going to challenge it. It's a free timeout. So right now, burning a timeout, I don't mind it at this point because of mm -hmm. the video challenges we also have in our back pocket. It basically gives you five timeouts. At least. So right now, I don't. Typically, I would say not to burn a timeout there, but with the video challenges and video reviews, don't mind it. All right, good spot there from Georgia Johnson. Jarjing just got caught a little bit with her feet kind of stagnant, not moving right there. And a good movement, though, from Georgia Johnson with that cross-court dink. 
So the end change here. 6-2 lead for Johnson and Rain. After they took game one, it was Harris and Jarjing who responded well in game two. But now the younger duo here trying to prove that they can hang with the veterans here on tour, of which Simone Jarjing certainly one of those. We talked about the Icon Award she received last night, and a lot of players on tour go up against her, and there's a little bit of awe <laughs> going against, up against Simone Jarjing because of what she has brought to this game and, and how many players she has coached and helped in their career. You talk about any female that wants to try and take a title of GOAT in mm. pickleball, you you, uh, you can't have that debate without Simone Jarjing. In my opinion, she is. Mm. What she's done, not only on the court for pickleball, it's what this woman does off the court for pickleball. Helping players, helping the young players, mm -hmm. you know, taking them in. This woman does it all, not only, like I said, on the court, but off the court. So you can't have that discussion without her being at the top of my list. Georgia Johnson with the serve. Oh, some great resets in the middle of that point before finally the point finds a way to end. <laughs> Unbelievable on from all four of these ladies here. Reset speed ups and reset speed ups again. But finally Georgia Johnson able to get on top of that last one. Again, Johnson hitting that ball in a great spot. Harris, a little jammed up on that one. So out of the end change, two more points for Johnson and Rain. That's so tough because Johnson's speeding that ball off of her shoe tops. That's a tough speed up. Well defended ATP from Allison Harris. Rain there to cover when Johnson was pulled out, but just too much on that one from Allison Harris. Yeah, Rain was there in the middle of the cover, but again, Allison Harris put a lot on this defense of the ATP. So an important service side here, Harris and Jarjing starting to cut into this lead. Yeah, that ball just out of the reach of Georgia Johnson. I like the aggressiveness though, up by five. Allison Harris with the mid pace speed up. Johnson ready for it and right back into the body of Jarjing. Yeah, it almost looked like Harris changed her mind what she wanted to do. She was gonna speed up but then changed her mind not to, but was already too committed. Jarjing going to shape that around the post and just a little too much angle on it. Well, same thing right there. I think Jarjing thought that she had that, but it was kind of checked up on her. And Harris is everywhere. Oh my god. And then Rain gets the ball off the sideline. And Jarjing just into the net. But what a point. Unbelievable. I think Allison Harris played two out balls, but the last one was definitely going out. She couldn't get out of the way. I thought that ball was going out off her paddle. It drops on the line.
Nice step in from Georgia Johnson, reading the speed up cross court from Harris. And a match point opportunity here for Johnson and Rain. Millie Rain with the serve. Oh, that ball definitely going out too for off the pedal of Allison Harris. But Georgia Johnson's eyes were lit up on her forehand here. So second match point opportunity happening right now. But Simone and Charging and Allison Harris will not go quietly. Well, we have seen teams get opportunities like this before. Last thing you want to do is give them any life. Especially a duo like Harris and Charging. But Johnson with a little bit less swing, it looked like, on those ones. She controlled the placement of that a little bit better and pushed her, Harrison Jarjing onto their second serve. Rain taking a strong cross-court angle out of the reach of Allison Harris's paddle. So they do get the side out, but now Harrison Jarjing have to defend their third match point. Rain and Johnson can end it here. Beautifully done in the middle from Simone Jarjing. Georgia Johnson finishes game three with some authority. Simone Jarjing and Allison Harris put up a great fight here in game three, but it is Millie Rain and Georgia Johnson who become our first women's doubles duo in a gold medal match on this Saturday from Delray Beach. We'll hear from them when we return. from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Now, since I've been using uh, Leo Rubber, I, I've had way less problem on my AT band and hips. It has been really a game changer for me, so I highly recommend it to everyone. That's what makes it so different. The whole idea about balanced compression, it improves your blood flow, reduces your fatigue. At the end of the day, you feel so much better. I feel comfortable. I feel supported. I feel that I can train harder, train longer, recover faster, and feel supported while I'm playing. And that's so crucial for me, especially in singles when I'm trying to play against the youngest. I'm not the youngest out there, but I try and play against the youngest. Need to sell tickets for an event? From Sports Illustrated's official ticketing platform, introducing Box Office. Manage ticketing for sports, festivals, fundraisers, and more, paid or free. And we go beyond the barcode. Introducing Super Ticket. Super Tickets are secured by blockchain technology and transform into exclusive digital content, promotions, and rewards between the event and guests. Cheaper, better, simpler, more secure. Sports Illustrated Tickets. Partner with us for your next event. The APP is sponsored by Fulfill. We swear it's a protein bar. Powerplate, official warm-up and recovery partner of the APP Tour. And PickleballSuperstore.com, official online retailer of the APP Tour. Let's take a look at our Gamma Live to Play Rally of the Match. Defense from Harris and Judging, the offense from Johnson and Rain. Both teams all over the court. That one almost out, just catches the line. 
Judging missing it into the net, but it's Johnson and Rain moving on to the gold medal match. And we're going to throw it down to Dom Catalano courtside with our Franklin post-match interview. All right, Millie, I'll start with you. Game one, you guys come out on top. What did they do in game two that slowed you guys down just enough? Uh, they're a great team. Um, they came in hot. They started making all their shots. Um, really, really great defense by the both of them. Um, so we just kind of tried to hone in and kind of be consistent. And it seems like, you know, Georgia, you guys like to play a little more aggressive. It seemed like in game two, they made more balls on your side bounce. Then in game three, you guys came out a little more aggressive. Was that your difference between games two and game three? I think so. Um, you know, they were they were really countering well in the second game. And I think that we weren't prepared to get as many balls back. And um, then in the third game, um, you know, I felt like we were a little more ready. And we had some great rallies, but ended up coming out on top of some important ones. All right, well, congratulations, ladies. Moving on to the gold medal match later on this evening. We'll take a break. Our second women's semifinal here on Championship Court at the APP Vlasic Classic in Delray Beach. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. A typical insurance, you're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to healthcare. APP is sponsored by Partake Brewing, non-alcoholic brews crafted for those who make it happen. Pro XR, innovation you can handle. And Turvis, the original insulated tumbler. Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge are one game away from winning their first gold medal as a women's doubles duo here on the APP Tour this season. journey and getting to know her better as a person, as a as a player, and uh, just been a really fun ride. St. Louis, thanks for coming out. <laughs> it was their first, but certainly not their last last year, Chad. Megan Fudge, Susanna Barr, a really impressive duo in women's doubles last year on the APP Tour. Today, mixing things up, they are going to play each other partnering with different women for the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach. Susanna Barr going to be playing with Mari Humberg. Megan Fudge playing with Jill Braverman. 
Yeah, there's there's pros and cons to this right now. <laughs> the pros are, you know, all your partners form or former partners' tendencies. The con, they know yours. Yep, yep. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, so, if you will. <laughs> in, in this one, my X factors are, are going to be Mari Humberg and Jill Braverman. For Barr and Humberg, they escaped an early round loss. They were down. 10-6 mm. or 10-5 in game one. Came back at 1-12-10. They were down 9-5 in game two. Brought it back to 10-9, but ended up losing the second one, 12-10. And then they really made their adjustment in game three. And came out and won that one quite easily. But since then, they've calmed themselves down a little bit. They've found some rhythm. Humburg is very tricky as far as the flicks and the speed ups that she has. However, she can try to overdo it, and that's where they get into trouble. We saw Braverman and Fudge earlier, and they were very clinical. Being aggressive, not trying to do too much, but they were just taking away the opportunities and the holes by their movement, their communication, and, and their, their ball positioning and ball placement. So, you know, this one will be an interesting matchup as far as both teams are not going to be able to be as aggressive because both teams are very good defensively. So, it's going to be, have to be, probably look for a little bit longer rallies, moving that ball around, creating opportunities, opening up gaps to, to speed up on. I was catching up with Susanna after that first match that you were talking about and she said exactly what you did which is that hey this is our first time playing together in a tournament and it took us a minute to figure out what that looked like now against Fudge and Braverman they're out of time expect both these teams to be very strong technically like you were talking about Chad and first point of the match goes to Susanna Barr and Mari Humberg. And you hear Jill Braveman say, I was so on that. She was. It was just she was back on her heels. The swing got a little big and flattened out. Fudge with the speed up, but Mari Humberg more than ready for it. Gets it back down at the feet of Megan Fudge. Can't get it back over the net. 2 0 2. Well-timed, well-placed speed up at Fudge. Usually it's Susanna Barr that we're talking about with the offensive lobs. But after Miami and Mari Humburg's onslaught of offensive lobs, that's come into her game. And then we saw the defense that I was talking about as far as both teams. That was the slow pace ball down to the feet of Bar that ended up giving you trouble. As you can see, both teams, if you try to hit through them, they're just getting a paddle on and putting it back. So finally, Braverman and Fudge with an opportunity to put themselves on the board here in game one. Mari Humberg goes behind Braverman as she was pinching middle. Forces them onto their second serve. And that one's not going to blow back in. Good movement, good coverage there from Humburg and Bart. Had Braveman and Fudge scrambling all over, playing eye formation almost. Speed up there from Susanna Barr and Mari Humberg. I think had it where she wanted it, just misplaced it. She got exactly what she wanted. Excellent setup from Barr. Humberg just stood up tall, overswung. Great resets in the middle of that point by Humberg and Barr, but ball goes out of bounds here. Off the paddle of Humberg. 
Yeah, we hear Braverman chirping a little bit, staring down Humberg while she's calling out. Already starting to try with the mind games and a little bit of intimidation. But it also feeds her as well. I was going to say, I don't think Mari Humberg is going to be intimidated by that because she does a little chirping well, as well. Well, it's not so much intimidation. It's, it's more frustration <laughs> that sure, you want to sure. shut the other person up across the net from you. <laughs> Zeta Barr goes for the step in there, but forehand into the net. And it's a good spot there from Fudge after she pulled Humburg out wide. So Braverman and Fudge get on the board here in game one. But just like that, side out forced by Barr and Humburg, and a chance to extend this lead. But uh, just hitting that one a little far up the paddle right there. A little bounce off that ball. And a little spin went a little wonky. Out of the wind and Braverman misses into the net. So it's a 4-1 lead here for Barr and Humberg. Good step in there. Humberg taking control of that point and extending the lead. Yeah, actually the previous point, Braverman was, was talking about how the wind kind of pushed that ball back toward the net. It was almost that she could let it go and and hit that bar. If it had done that, it would have been a replay. Re replay, yeah. But you see that one there, it kind of pushes it down for Humberg as well. So it definitely is swirling. It's not a it's not a consistent uh, direction here inside the stadium because obviously that wind's coming in and it's running around the stadium. So it'll be a side out. Megan Fudge with the serve. Overhead set up from Mari Humberg, and she's going to put that one away. Yeah, she missed one earlier. Wasn't going to miss that one. And a good setup there from Bart. Got Fudge outstretched on the forehand. Great spot from Bar there into the middle. Braverman misses deep. So it'll be another side out. Humberg with the serve up 5 1. Oh, she's right there. But you saw a bar just kind of standing up a little too tall. Hand kind of laid back, and then it just creates a wrist flick down into the net. Almost the same thing there. Yeah, a little different spot there from Braverman. This time going above the head of Bar, trying to hit that scorpion. Tweener. Yeah. Humberg in the right spot for it, but can't put enough on that tweener. So it will be a point for Fudge and Braverman. Yeah, good offensive love there from Megan Fudge. And the wind the wind continued to push that one a little deeper. Great angle taken there by Mari Humberg on the forehand. Off the paddle of Fudge and out of bounds. Second serve, Joe Braverman with it. Braverman kind of held up on that ball, ball a little bit. She didn't fully commit to the shot. I'm not sure if she thought about speeding it up there and then just decided to bump it back over. But you give Mari Humbug a ball that's Anything above the knees, she's really going to put some spin on that flick. Yeah. 
That's a good ball there from Fudge. Taking it out of the air, nice and early, rolling it down the feet, taking away the timing of Bart. So a side out here, Barr and Humberg have been sitting at five points for quite a few service sides. And it's going to be Braverman and Fudge with a chance to cut into that three-point lead. And they do. Yeah, that's the danger for Mari Humberg there. She likes to add a heavy top spin. She accelerates, hits the ball hard, but if it's not perfect, she has a tendency to hit a ball a little flatter, sprays a little deep. So she really has to focus on staying, keeping the paddle head underneath the ball, really brushing up the back and, and not overhitting. Are having to adjust there. Can't do it in time to get that ball back over the net. So it's going to be Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman with a chance to tie us up here in a very closely contested game one so far. Well, and I guarantee that's a little insight help from Megan Fudge right there as far as Barr having some difficulties on the backhand side because of the tendonitis in that elbow. And you see her with the arm guard. She wants to try to slide and hit that forehand a lot of the time. But you have seen Braverman hit three different shots. Firstly, went right at the right shoulder. Bar tried to slide a little bit more. This time she tried to slide again, and Braverman is following her in the slide. So it's a good comeback here for Fudge and Braverman. Bar and Humburg have had their opportunities, but trying to do a little too much uh, at times. I think they need to kind of bring things back in, play simpler pickleball, Move that ball around a little bit. Put some pressure on ba on Fudge and Braveman. And if you're Fudge and Braveman, just go out. Be aggressive. Yep. Keep with the speed ups. Get those pop ups. So out of the timeout, if you are Bar and Humberg, how do you set the tone? I I think right now they have to look more at an extended rally, mm. as far as moving the ball around a little bit. There are times where they had Braveman and Fudge in that eye formation to start with off of the third shot with a good fourth shot. And then, you know, there, there are times where Fudge is a little more susceptible on that wider forehand. She is on the right side now. If they can get Barr into a cross-court dink with her. Instead, same and spot. not give it to Braveman right yeah. in front so she can speed it up. So out of the timeout, Braverman and Fudge take the lead here in game one in our best two out of three to 11. Humberg reaching in late for that one and shakes her head as she walks away from the miss. Yeah, that's where Humberg just needs to get big in the middle there. Buy bar time to come forward. Don't second guess it. Big return there and an important side out for Barr and Humberg. First time they've trailed in this first game. With the ball on their side. Humberg wanted that ball all day. Fourth shot, sixth shot from Jill Braverman. She kind of just hit it back, didn't really put any pace on it, didn't put a whole lot of spin on it. Gave Barr the opportunity to finally get that ball down, and then it got them in trouble. I'd like to see her be a little bit more aggressive as they're coming forward in this transition. So a chance here to tie things up. Susanna Barr with the second serve. And instead, the pressure put on by Megan Fudge during that point. And it's a good spot from Fudge, too. Difficult for a Humburg once it's in between the feet to really do anything with that ball. She's looking for something that's a little more outside of the feet that she can get extended on. I like
like the angle taken there from Susanna Barr catching Jill Braverman a little bit off guard. Yeah, none of those overheads were hit into the same spot on the court. So Fudge and Braverman were scrambling each time. court. Ernie there for the winner, Mari Humberg. Yeah, that was the only way that she was going to be able to create that angle right there. Again, a couple of good overheads from Barr and Humberg, but we see Humberg get way outside the court there, kind of split the kitchen to be able to create that last angle. So a side out, but quickly onto their second serve, our Humberg and Barr. Another opportunity here to tie things up. Like the lob from Mari Humberg catches Braverman. Well, we're at that time of the day, too, where the sun becomes a factor on the side that Fudge and Braverman are. So even though that wasn't the best of offensive lobs from Humberg, it did throw it up into the sun, and Braverman wasn't able to get behind it. She pointed in that direction after that point as well. Did Braverman. Oh, again, Humberg getting too big. She wanted that ball, but just misses into the net. So a side out here, but Barr and Humberg doing some work to tie things up here in this game one. Very close game one between these two teams. Spot in the gold medal match on the line. You'd expect nothing less. Been a couple of speed outs from Barr where she hasn't been in the best position and Trying to do a little too much with the ball. Probably not the best ball either. Another point added for Fudge and Braverman as they take a two-point lead. Important hold here for Humberg and Barr. If they can... Oh. And they do. Humberg just paints the corner there. Braverman gets it back, and then she takes the harsh angle. Well, that's a full pronation of the hand and paddle there to be able to hit that angle. Makes it look like she's going to hit an overhead straight down the line. And then Barr missing the dink into the net. So it sets up a game point opportunity here for Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman. Susanna Barr and Mari Humberg want a minute to talk about it. Yeah, just a few too many errors here from Barr and Hubberg down the stretch. They were playing clean when they are up early. And then a little bit of the pressure from Frudge and Braverman. And then also catching Barr in the transition. That is kind of her Achilles heel as far as coming through that transition. And at times choosing to speed a ball up from there. But we've also had a couple of missed higher balls from Humburg after a good setup from Barr. So it's a, it's a combination of the both right now. If they can clean some things up, they have the potential to come back here in game one. But even so, just getting back in a better, better rhythm to go into game two. They did start this game with a 5-1 lead. But now it is Braverman with the opportunity to take game one on her paddle. The speed up there from Humberg, not at the right time. Fudge was more than ready for it. And so game one goes to Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman here in our women's pro doubles semifinal spot in the gold medal match on the line in game two when we come back to Delray Beach.
Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Megan Fudge and Jill Braverman take 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 game at one. Chad, how'd they do it? Yeah, I mean, off to a little bit of a slow start, but they fought through the early onslaught of Barr and Hamburg, and then they started hitting the right spots. A good ball there from Fudge to pull Hamburg out wide, and then a couple of untimely errors from both Hamburg and Barr really allowed Braverman and Fudge back into it. Joe Braverman getting us started with the serve here in game two. That's the spot that Hamburg and Barr have to attack. It's the right hip of Megan Fudge. If they try to go into the body, she's going to slide and counter with that backhand. They have to anticipate the movement, go outside that right hip or even right at the hip. Leaving a ball up for Jill Braverman like that, a dangerous proposition. Braverman makes him pay. Great spot there, Susanna Barr, forehand right through the middle. Yeah, she just held that one a little bit. Braverman thought she was going to come into the body with it, but... Bar slid it through the middle a little bit more. Humber <laughs> goes for the lob, and Braverman says, See ya. As yeah. she puts it away. That one was not deep enough. 0 1 1, the score for Braverman's serve. somehow <laughs> takes that out enough to paint the baseline. Braverman hyping up her partner. Another look here, Chad. Yeah, nice open face lob there from Megan Fudge with heavy backspin. I thought about going up for it. it. was out of reach, and then a good move there from Braverman. Starting to feel it a little bit. Bringing that momentum back on their side. That one just cut off from Fudge. You saw her weight falling back as she made contact. 2-1-2 two, two for Fudge's serve. Yeah. Susanna Barr with some impressive resets, but then Braverman finds a spot in the middle. Again, the setup, a good setup from Barr, but she missed hit. The second ball didn't hit it cleanly. 
So Megan Fudge with a chance to extend this 3-1 lead. a good spot there from Hamburg. Didn't try to do too much with that flick. Just focused on the extension through the ball and the acceleration. So Braveman sliding. Fudge caught that one back behind her. And that's a good answer. <laughs> Jill, Jill giving the side eye right now. She's walking back to the baseline saying that's not the spot. Oh, it's in. Better spot there from Humberg as she finds a tough spot for Megan Fudge to get the ball back over the net. Yeah, somehow Fudge able to get that ball back after it was elevated up underneath the chin. And then Barr missing the serve deep. So they get one point, but then an unforced error on the serve from Susanna Barr. Yes, so it'll be Megan Fudge with the serve originally from Germany, but now mostly calls Florida home, lives in an RV with her family. I don't know if any pickable pro at this point calls any location <laughs> fully home. Or commentator, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> anybody associated with professional pickle? Anybody associated in the staff with APP certainly that. doesn't. They get in here three days before the tournament, and they're out two days after. The double, that's a double deke right there. Braverman pointing at Fudge saying, I thought you swung, and then Braverman couldn't get there either. <laughs> Fudge, Fudge <laughs> slid, started to swing, couldn't get there. Braverman started to swing, she couldn't get there. Four two two. the score for Braverman, sir. Scramble City. Scramble City that ends on the side of Braverman and Fudge, and you can hear them hype each other up after that point. Yeah, that's a good get there from Bar right here. And Fudge scrambled over. So it's a 5-2 lead here for Fudge and Braverman in game two. They took game one and would love to end this match in two. One step closer. Yeah, good drop there. Right at the feet of Hamburg. Doesn't give herself any room. Doesn't step back and clear it. So it's a 6-2 lead here for Fudge and Braverman. Susanna Barr and Mari Hamburg calling the timeout on the court as they trail by four here in our women's doubles semifinal. Spot in the gold medal match on the line. And the winner of this one going to take on Georgia Johnson and Millie Rain to decide brings home the gold here from the APP Vlasic Classic, Delray Beach. Really fun, tightly contested points. I know Fudge and Braverman have the four-point lead, but these points, Chad, seem like they are so close, and the margin for error on both teams is so slim. Well, like I said at the beginning, both teams are excellent on defense. The difference being is Fudge and Braverman have played a little bit cleaner. They haven't made the mistakes that Barr and Hamburg have, and they haven't missed the opportunities to capitalize when they've been given. Barr and Hamburg have set up some really good points, but they haven't been able to finish them 
And Fudge and Braveman aren't going to give you too many second chances. fight ends that point. Susanna Barr ends up getting on top of it enough to finish it. Yeah, that was a, that was a ball in the middle of that point where I can't even tell who hit it. I'm pretty sure Braveman got a paddle on it back, but again, Fudge and Braveman covering that middle, covering all, all gaps, and it's really making it difficult. For... Ooh, that's it. Cross-court dig from Barr, left a little bit short. So it's going to be on to their second serve. Well, and that's the the second guess there and the, the lack of footwork. Good defense there from Barr, even just to keep him in it after the shorter offensive log from Hamburg. Missing it again. A little bit short for Susanna Barr. So they force the side out out of that timeout, but... Can't add to their own point total. Braverman gets the ball back in the same exact position. She's at. Oh. Humber going for the change of pace, change of spot, but just misses deep. I, mean, I, I get what Humbug was doing there. Probably should have gone back over the head of Megan Fudge after coming forward, but she also had Braveman kind of hung out in the middle of the court there. Would have liked to see a speed up rather than the offensive lob. from Megan Fudge finds a spot nothing Humber could do right there little net love off of the forehand from Bart nice patience let it get around the post that time Braverman right into the right shoulder of Mari Humberg. and a timeout called on the court by Barr and Humberg as they trail by seven here in this second game. We talked about how tightly contested these points have been, and yet the vast majority of them have gone the way of Fudge and Braverman. How are they finding that edge to be the one to put the ball away? Well, it's it's just the consistency and the, the continued pressure from them. They're, you know, Fudge and, uh, sorry, Barr and Humberg are finding themselves more in defensive mode than in attack mode. Whereas Fudge and Braveman are really in attack mode of putting that pressure on. So yes, they're long and extended points, but a lot of the time it's Byron Humburg just trying to tread water and keep their keep their head above to stay in the point. And also, you know, it, it just looks like Byron has lost some of the rhythm in that cross court forehand, which is typically her strength. The balls are getting on her a little bit. They're getting a little too close. And it could be a part of, of, of the pressure. And Jill Braverman with the serve. Leaves that ball short. Third shot drop. Can't make it over. So it'll be second serve here for Megan Fudge. Good time out there from Byron Humburg. Just slowed the momentum a little bit. Couple of missed drops into the net. Speed up from Susanna Barr right at Fudge. Redirect to Humburg who misses into the net. 
Offensive lob or the lob, excuse me, from Mari Humberg. Oh, you're right. That's an Just offensive lob. <laughs> the offensive lob from Mari Humberg, not in the right spot. Well, it's it's tough to lob off that ball too because the ball has gotten too close to the body. They're almost behind her. In order to hit that really good offensive lob, it needs to be further out in front so you can get extended, and that's what gives it the depth. And so now an opportunity here, match point for Jill Braverman and Megan Fudge. They can punch their ticket to the gold medal match with this serve. Jill Braverman says too cute on that one, left it short. So, second serve. 10-2-2 for Braverman. And a strong serve from Jill Braverman is what ends up punching their ticket to the gold medal match. Jill Braverman, Megan Fudge, just clinical throughout those first two games. We're going to hear how they got it done when we come back. The APP Blastic Classic, Delray Beach. I'm Vivian Chan here with Blastic Pickles, and we're putting the pickle into pickleball. In pickleball, a slice is a chop shot used to create backspin on the ball. I'm going to show you how to make a fried chicken sandwich topped with plastic sandwich dill pickle chips that will put your taste buds into a spin. Now this is a really big dill. Now, since I've been using uh, Leo Rubber, I, I've had way less problem on my AT band and hips. It has been really a game changer for me, so I highly recommend it to everyone. That's what makes it so different. The whole idea about balanced compression, it improves your blood flow, reduces your fatigue. At the end of the day, you yep. feel so much better. I feel comfortable. I feel supported. I feel like I can train harder, train longer, recover faster, and feel supported while I'm playing. And that's so crucial for me, especially in singles when I'm trying to play against the youngest. I'm not the youngest out there, but I try and play against the youngest. After a slow start in game one, going down 5-0, it was the Fudge and Braverman show after that. Good aggression, good control. They're moving on to the gold medal match. We'll throw it down to Dominic Catalano, who's courtside with our Franklin post-match interview. All right, Megan, I'll start with you. Pace was the name of the game. Was that the game plan going in because it looked like you guys wanted to set the tone early, and you did that? Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, kudos to Susanna and Mari. You're a fantastic team. Um, they've got great hands, and actually, we wanted to be the more patient team, um, but at the same time, setting the tone when we had opportunities to. Um, so it was definitely a balance back and forth. Um, we had some fantastic hands battles and uh, great communication with my partner right here of just who had what ball, and uh, I know we could do defense all day, so it was a lot of fun. And then, Jill, moving on to the gold medal match, which is actually this evening. What does it mean to you, and now what's a game plan going in against Georgia and Millie, too? Oh, man, a game plan? That would require some form of thought, Dom. <laughs> Come on, you know me better than that. <laughs> no, it means the world. I think this would be, uh, this is my first, uh, no, no, it would be my second. I can't even think. <laughs> uh, APP, women's doubles gold medal, so hoping, uh, hoping to make it there. And just love playing with Megan. Her defense is, is second to none, really. All right, well, congratulations, ladies. Get some rest. We'll see you guys later on Championship Court. That does it for women's side of things. We'll see what the men have to offer here this afternoon at the APP Blastic Classic here in Delray Beach. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get 
paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side to side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. clear fulfill is a protein bar not a candy bar don't let its creamy chocolatey goodness confuse you or the fact that you hide them from anyone with a sweet tooth you saw nothing i saw nothing fulfill we swear it's a protein bar the app is sponsored by aarp helping your health and happiness live as long as you do franklin and Vlasic Pickles, official pickle of the APP Tour. Hey, I'm Chef Chad Rosenthal, and I'm here today with Elastic Pickles to put the pickle in pickleball. In pickleball, a dill ball is a shot that is inbounds and is bounced only once. It's a live ball. This Vlasic Pickle Dip is a live ball of pickle flavor. Crunchy pickle perfection. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. warm-up and recovery partner of the APP Tour. The top-seeded duo of Gabriel Tardio, Andre Diascu, they are taking on the duo of Howells and Johnson. Andre Diascu and Gabe Tardio. Yeah. Tremendous oh, hands by Howell. Beautiful forehand winner from Johnson. A little hey, verbal now. aggression there from Will Howells. We will head to a winner-take-all game three as Howells and
Dustin Johnson take game two 11 to 5 against Andre Diascu and Gabe Tardio. Look at the bounce in the step right now of Diascu and Tardio. Just catches the line and there are new Kings crowned in Sacramento. Andre Diascu and Gabe Tardio take it in three games. That's the kind of competitive spirit that we need and I think we're making a great thing together and finally we got our first gold medal. You just saw there Andre Deascu and Gabe Tardio picking up their first gold medal. They'll be looking to move on to another gold medal match later on this afternoon, but they got to get through the tandem of Eric Lang and Rob Nunnery. That match coming up next here on Championship Court at the APP Vlasic Classic in Delray Beach. My name is Chef Jamoke Jackson. I'm here with Vlasic Pickles, and I'm putting the pickle back in pickleball. In pickleball, a chop is a slice from high to low to put a backspin on the pickleball. I'm chopping up Vlasic Pickles to make this sweet and savory chopped pickle salad. Feta cheese, Kalamata olives, olive oil, red wine vinegar, lemon juice, sugar, black pepper, toss to mix. Sweet, heat, and full of flavor. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped, suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. by Vlasic Pickles, official pickle of the APP Tour. AARP, helping your health and happiness live as long as you do. And Rainstorm, clean, plant-based energy. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. A typical insurance? You're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to health care.
back here on championship. What else can you say about Diascu and Nonary? All business. Oh. Is the point that does it. Andre Diascu and Rob Nunnery win the gold here in Houston. And then with the Midas touch, Diascu and Nunnery. Nunnery with the around the post that rolls into the LED boards. Andre Diascu and Rob Nunnery won the gold yet again. 22 straight points, two shutouts. I, I haven't seen that in a regular game, let alone on Championship Sunday. Well, there you have Rob Nunnery and Andre Deescu. They may be on the same court right now, but they are opposing each other in this matchup. The dynamic duo took many gold medals last year. Eight of Chad them. And, Eight of them, I believe. Yep. And it is. It was an incredible run. Right now, Rob Nunnery coming back from an injury, a knee injury, so his first tournament back since Punta Gorda. He missed Sacramento, missed Miami. So we'll see how that knee holds up. It's held up all right today. He's sitting in the semifinal here trying to punch a ticket to Championship Sunday. Well, you know, one thing Rob Nunnery does well is he picks, he picks big, lanky partners. Because <laughs> you want to talk about big men, you got Andre Diascu on one side with Gay Tardio, and then Rob's new partner, Eric Lang. Same size, a little bit larger body frame. Both guys have extreme power, excellent reach. So it'll be interesting to see. Lang doesn't move as well as Diascu, though. No, 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 absolutely not. Nobody really moves as well as Diascu, <laughs> and, and he's a big man. But, I mean, what's your X factor coming in for this matchup here, Chad? Uh, honestly, I I think what it's going to to come down to uh, is Tadio and Lang, right? Because we we just saw it in the in the women's semifinal with Fudge and Bar. There's pros and cons between playing against your former partner. More so a con because you both know what each other are going to do. Oh, and Eric Lang starting like, out early, pulling the trigger. I like aggressive Eric Lang. Yes. We've been waiting many <laughs> years for aggressive <laughs> Eric Lang. He looked over at both of us after we made our comments and smiled. And, and there and, it is. And that's aggressive Eric Lang right there. Yes, it is. It's very aggressive Eric Lang. All right, we did see Lang and Mantow in Miami make a good run as well. And yeah, they made it to the semifinals and then yep. end up taking bronze. Well, that one didn't pull Tadio. No, not one bit. He was dialed into that one right there. But right now it seems like the game plan for Lang and Nunnery is to pull the trigger early and see what we get. I mean, yeah, put the pressure on. Really come out aggressive. Good, quick tempo. I mean, like Diascu said in, in the previous match, he likes to hit a lot of balls. He wants to stay in the long, longer rallies. That is high. And in the sun. Oh. He had what he wanted right there. Got it up in the sun. They charged. And then has a ball he could do something with here. Yeah, just a little in front of it. Almost took out Nunnery in the process. Nunnery got a shoulder to the chin. Oh, that's such good ball control there from Lang. Good roll out wide. One, two, two. And then just another ball down to the feet. Yeah, and right now what you're seeing is Tardio knows it's coming, but he's trying to make a statement back, and he's getting too big with his swing. Two, one, one. Two. Healthy Rob Nunnery makes that ball. Footwork isn't quite what we saw two, from Nunnery 
up until the in injury in Punta Gorda. Good spot, pulling Lang completely wide on both sides. Looking up in the stands, seeing Marlon, Rob's girlfriend, telling him to calm down, slow things down. She is the Stay voice. Patient. She is the She's voice, voice of, of reason in that relationship, 100%. Marlon and I have good conversations. That's a great speed up from Rob Nunnery. He know, and again, that's the I know him. I know where I can yep. go on him and not get hurt. That being Andre Descu. There's Marlon right there. We have good conversations because Rob and Simone are very similar in their thought processes of how they play pickleball. <laughs> that one just a little too much there from Nunnery. Weight falling back just a little bit. Two, one, two. Huge serve. Oh, one, my goodness. There thing, is no slowing him down. Yeah, right one now. thing you can say with uh, Eric Lang is that he's found a little bit of confidence with the new paddle switch. Yes, he has. He's quite excited to use the new paddle. Yes, he is. Three, one, two. He can't believe how much power he has with the new paddle. So. <laughs> Oh, and sometimes a little too much power. He just whipped that one through right there. Can't believe he missed that one, but they do take a 3-1 lead. Oh, nice speed up from Tardio. Holds it on his paddle well and long. Yeah, sometimes he can get a little too violent with that motion. Tries to do a little too much, and the body jerks. That one, not so much. Nice and controlled. Good spot. Oh. Yeah, what a hands battle with all four of these guys right here. Thought Nunnery had a couple winners. I mean, that's just court coverage right there. Tadio slides over the middle as Dieske goes for the Oni. Then slides back across as Dieske comes in. Only been playing a few tournaments together, but their movement, their understanding, they're on top of things. Four, three, one. That was going to be a very ambitious around the post there. Good angle, pulls Tadio all the way back away from the kitchen line. So difficult to try to shape that one from that angle. Nice spot there from Nunnery, the flick down the middle. So the call on the court was out from Nunnery and Lang. And immediately you're going to get a challenge from Tardio and Deascu. So it was, it was close. Nunnery was standing out of bounds. And Ball was attacking and going right at his foot. Now my question was, did it hit his foot before... It hit, but so it looks like oh, that ball is clearly in. Hold on a second. The call was sorry. Call I was distracted was, the call, in the call booth. Was, the call was out. 
But that ball's in. That by, ball's in. But about okay, so two what? Feet. What? What this replay doesn't do justice is Deascu hit this ball so hard and so fast because it was up at the net, bounced up high, and he punished this ball. Well, head referee Larry Scott waiting on the decision. Upon review. Ball is Here it is at full speed. Watch uh, Deascu punish that ball. Yeah, okay, I can see that. And so you can see why. You have three. You have so, I thought that ball was out. Quick, yeah. Uh, Quick decision there from video referee Joe Marie Holzhammer. Good reach in, good spot there from Diascu. Catching Nunnery, still moving just a little bit. Four, three, one. That's the, that was the <laughs> double change up there from Lang. Good <laughs> reach in, roll down on the feet, then <laughs> go. Very fleet of feet <laughs> is Makes it Eric look, Lang. Makes it look like he's going to blast the next one. And just kind of rolls it down the paddle. That's so good. The first one, you can, how easily could you overhit that? He goes uh, inside out. Quite easily, and we see it all the time. Right, goes inside out with the first and then punishes the second. Just misses this backhand flick, does Eric Lang. Off his paddle, I thought this was way out, but it was a lot closer, I think, than it looked. Ooh. Yeah, he kind of, it, it wasn't a full roll. It was an open face and came around it. Four, three, one. Just stood up through the two-handed cross-court tank just enough. Five, three, one. That's tough right there. Nunder is trying to speed that up cross-court at Tardio, who's already crashing. Six, three, one. Four. Yeah, ball's probably going out wind at their, in their face. <laughs> so, <laughs> at one point it was at the back. Now right. it's in their face. Yeah, now it's, now, their it's face. now it's swirling around. Seven, three, one. That, see, that's the that's the danger of Tadio right there. Is he's so short and quick on the backhand side. And then even when he does move, he, he keeps it short. It's very difficult to hit through. Diascu very difficult to hit to well, hit through. Right. I'll take another look at it. Flick, flick. Yeah, and that's exactly what you said, Chad. It's just nice, easy, short, compact. And what's happened right now is that Tardio and Diascu have dialed in the pace, right? And so early on, Eric Lane came in hot and heavy. But that's the thing. Once you see it more, now you can dial it in. And you think that's the difference here on the side of Tardio and Deascu? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, you know, we every time that we've seen Tardio and Deascu, it's been a little bit of a slower start, right? They've got that feeling out process. They're figuring out, you know, what's going to be coming at them and how they're going to, one, diffuse that and dissect it, and then two, what's their attack going to be coming back? Right now, they got caught off guard with, with the early attacks, but now they're just waiting for that counter and, and going back at it. All right, so Nunnery and Lang burn their first time out here. We resume play 8-3-1. 
for Tardio and Dasku. Oh, he <laughs> set himself up well. Oh. And then you see it's straight as a board on that next one to try and finish. And game point here for Dasku and Tardio. That'll do it right there. I thought it was over early on. Great battle there from Nunnery and Lang, but it is just too much. Dasku and Tardio, 11-3 victory. We'll take a break. Game two on the other side here at the APP Blasted Classic in Delray Beach. It's less beer. Cut tire. Nothing brings us together like Eggland's best eggs. We love the taste, always so fresh and delicious, plus superior nutrition. For us, it's eggs any style, as long as they're the best. Eggland's best. Game one going to Tardio and Dayescu. They handled the pace after a little rough start, but an 11-3 victory pretty handily. We'll see what Nunnery and Lane can do here in game two to try and force a third jam. Ooh, left foot reach in. Larry Scott all over it. I, he almost scared me with the foot fault call, but Gabe Tardio. Well, that's because we were watching him hit the ball. Larry was just... Dialed in on the kitchen line. Out. Take a look at it. Left toe Ooh. right there. Yep. If he was wearing size nines, he would have been all right. Oh, it was who was going to give in first. It wasn't going to be Dayescu. It wasn't was, going to be Nunnery either. No, they were going to grind that out until someone made a mistake, but it was Tardio just reaching in a little too far. Anybody else? Andre complains a little 100%. more about 100 percent about a hindrance. Like about a hindrance. Yeah. But because it's Rob, he's not going to say anything. 
They are very tight. They are very close friends. But Rob did say, come on, right before Eric hit that ball. Uh, just a little flat there from Lang. Didn't quite get the paddle head underneath it. A little too quick with the wrist. Change up. That's the pace right there that I think they need to mix in. It's like it's just like anything. You dial into yep. a fastball. Now you got to throw something off speed. Nunnery does right there. The ball dips a little on Tardio. Well, and usually that's Nunnery speed ups right there too. They're medium pace. They're not overly hard. It's all about the spin and the and the position location. Nunnery trying to fire himself and partner Eric Lang up right here. And they have a nice 3-0 lead here early on. Good Lang. spot. Yeah, Lang just a little far out in front of that one. Expected to be coming a little bit harder. He wasn't fooled by that no, one. No, Tadio made the adjustment on that one. Didn't jump out at it, just let the ball come to him. One, two, three, one. Setting up for the speed up, yeah. <laughs> if they ask you right at the body of Nunnery, he puts the hand up to apologize, but Nunnery gives him a thumbs up saying, nice shot, because that's the right spot to go to. That, if I mean, if Tadio can get out of the way, which is quite difficult to do when the ball is coming that hard, I'm thinking that ball is putting a dent in the LED ball. It's, well, back here. it's going through his chest if he doesn't get a paddle on it. He wanted to hit it. Whoa. Good drop right there from Daescu recovering. And then Tardio puts the pressure on in the middle. Cover, though, in the middle from Tardio after the first speed up from Nunnery down the line, and then Gabe covers the middle, but just too much pressure from Nunnery and Lang. He's going to grab a towel right now. Not a timeout. Just getting rid of the sweat. Yo, it's it's tough to try to get through Diascu and Tadio from the transition area. Oh, 
Oh, nice inside out from Nunnery. Yeah, and that's that's the attack from Nunnery that we that we typically see, right? It's a big swing. It's like he's going to rip it hard, and he just slides it along the paddle. Daescu gets out of the way thinking it's going to be about a foot deep. Well, that's one of the reasons, too, Rob Nunnery does like a softer paddle. Yeah. He's one of the only pros that uses that Selkirk Lux paddle because he does like to take a full swing, and with that paddle, though, it doesn't have a ton of pop. So with that full swing and his shape that he puts on it keeps it in. Oh, I was just short. It's a good leave from Lang. It was almost, it was close. I don't know if it was a purposeful leave. I think he missed it. I think he missed it. <laughs> I think, he may I think, have. I think it was out if because you, it was short of his paddle. <laughs> oh, oh, that one. That's the downside right there of trying to create too much power. Lang wants to absolutely destroy that ball. Takes a little too big of a backswing and gets level with the body, loses sight of it, hits the top of the edge guard. Nice speed up initially from Gabe Tardio. And Tardio's done a good job of hitting the right spots. So a timeout here from Lang and Daescu. And what were you saying, Chad, about Tardio, what he's done a good job of here in this second game? Well, and we'll go. We'll look at that last point. He He's taken balls out of the air. He's, he's taken away the timing of Nunnery. And then with that same one, he's going right at that right hip of Nunnery. Typically, especially when you go on a cross-court attack, which we always talk about is difficult, but it can be done. That right side player coming with the attack from the right side, they're going to be shading that backhand more. So if we can find that right hip, they then have to slide across. So we'll take a hit out of the air, pinches in middle, out of the air, pinches in middle again, and then right hip and gets that ball popped up. As the paddle slides across, it then is very difficult to keep down. Typically, we'll see it more from... You know, more in the in the women's game because the men don't like to give as much time, but that's where the spot becomes so important. So after the timeout, it'll be Gabe Tardio serving all tied here at five. Deescu and Tardio looking to end it here in two after taking game one, 11-3. Again, it was the two hands on the paddle on the backhand from Desk. He pulls the trigger. But typically, that's Lang's strength right there as well. Is that backhand counter attack, and he hits it with both feet off the ground. He jumps up to get on top of it. But again, just a little too early, too overextended. Good speed up from Desk. Side out here to Nunnery and Lang trailing by two. Need this second game to force a third. Big serve from Lang, and you heard they ask you say stay on this, meaning they were going to uncoil out of the stack, but they don't.
There's the nunnery speed up again. Sells it with the body. Slides to the left while misdirecting that ball straight ahead down the line. But it also puts him in a good position for the next attack. Big finish there from Gabe Tardio. Handles the pace from Lang and then has the finish of his own. Take another look here. That's the spot too. Going back across the body there, Nunnery doesn't give him the chance to defend it. And Nunnery's not going to miss that one. That's one of his bread and butters right there, that four or backhand flick. This guy misses one ball and gets so mad. But you know, though, he gets so mad and then he moves on to the next one. Takes it with the big fist pump. <laughs> Nottery finishes with it as well. <laughs> good reach in here from, good defense there from Nunnery initially, but then Lang here with the good defense in the middle. He's able to finish off the tape. He'll take it. I can't believe it could get any worse. He's missed a couple of those speed ups on the back end side. Oh man, yeah, tough one. He thought he had Tardio up over the top, but unfortunately, Deescu read it perfectly. He was over the top of Tardio, but not Deescu as he covers beautifully for the overhead. from Nunnery, second server. Yep. Little towel off break again. I mean, we're sweating here in the booth in the shade with a little bit of breeze. I know. <laughs> These guys <laughs> gone through numerous wardrobe changes throughout the day. Oh, that was out. It's tough when you're in that hands battle to lay off a ball that you're already looking to counter. Yeah, big finish, great read. From Tardio will give us a match point here in game number two. That was, that was instant. Yes. That was instant. Diascu, why, well, come on. And before the come on even came out of his mouth, Nunnery was like, no, 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 challenge. I thought it was close. We're on. 
if this ends the match, we're, we're, it's very anticlimactic. <laughs> we're on the tough side right there as far as we don't we don't have the, the premiere view. It oh, looks like it's looks inside like it's the in. line. Yeah. Though. yeah. Andre's looking to paddle tap. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, no. It does look out. Oh, I'm, that's as close as you I'm can not, get. I'm not calling you, this you one. You have to. You're one for two this weekend. Oh, dude. That is close. A video review. Ball is out. Wow, that's a quick call. Oh, wow, they reviewed that, called that. It is out. So game two goes to Deescu and Tardio, 11-7. They will move on to the gold medal match later on this evening. We'll take a break and hear from Tardio and Deescu here at the APP Vlasic Classic in Delray Beach. Need to sell tickets? Illustrated's official ticketing platform, introducing Box Office. Manage ticketing for sports, festivals, fundraisers, and more, paid or free. And we go beyond the barcode. Introducing Super Ticket. Super Tickets are secured by blockchain technology and transform into exclusive digital content, promotions, and rewards between the event and guests. Cheaper, better, simpler, more secure. Sports Illustrated Tickets. Partner with us for your next event. Healthcare partner of the APP Tour. Needs Diascu and Tadio first team punching their ticket to gold medal match in men's doubles. Good adjustment by them. Nunnery and Lang got up early in game one and in game two, but just too much Tadio, too much Diascu. They're courtside with Dominic Catalano for a Franklin post-match interview. All right, Andre. Robin Eric came out firing both game one and game two. What did you guys do to kind of slow that pace down? Uh, we knew how to make our drops, uh, play pretty clean in transition, uh, count them pretty well, which I wasn't doing a good job of in the first game to start. But then I figured out the spots, I figured out the pace, and then, uh, yeah, went on a pretty good run to finish game one. And, look, this guy's a great competitor. And, we knew they were probably going to try to play super fast, which they did. They were trying to redline it. So I knew as long as we stay solid, we'll probably come out on top. And, uh, yeah, props to Gabe. He was countering very well. And I felt like I was resetting and slowing it down pretty good. And, uh, yeah, happy to be playing another final with this guy. And, Gabe, it did look like they were going to come at you really hard, really fast early on. What did you do to kind of change your mindset that you needed to slow down, not get so big with your swings? Yeah, I mean, the, I feel like the first one that caught me for surprise. But then mm -hmm. as the game went on, I was a little more ready. Uh, I kind of like knew his partners, which ball they were attacking, stuff like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, 
All right, well, congratulations, boys. Get some rest. Moving on to the gold medal match later on this evening. Next up, though, on championship court, our second men's semifinal here at the APP Vlasic Classic in Delray Beach. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. To be clear, Fulfill is a protein bar, not a candy bar. Don't let its creamy, chocolatey goodness confuse you or the fact that you hide them from anyone with a sweet tooth. You saw nothing. I saw nothing. Fulfill. We swear it's a protein bar. The APP is sponsored by LS, official on-court apparel of the APP Tour. CND Nets, the highest quality nets made in the USA. And Turvis, the original insulated tumbler. No, since I've been using uh, Leo Rubber, I, I've had way less problem on my AT band and hips. It has been really a game changer for me, so I highly recommend it to everyone. That's what makes it so different. The whole idea about balanced compression, it improves your blood flow, reduces your fatigue. At the end of the day, you feel so much better. I feel comfortable. I feel supported. I feel that I can train harder, train longer, recover faster, and feel supported while I'm playing. And that's so crucial for me, especially in singles when I'm trying to play against the youngest. I'm not the youngest out there, but I try and play against the youngest. A typical insurance? You're just another senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to healthcare. Nothing makes a gathering great like Eggland's best eggs. They're just so delicious. With better nutrition, too. For us, it's eggs any style. As long as they're the best. Eggland's best. Welcome back to Delray Beach, Florida. Our final men's doubles semifinal coming your way next here on Championship Court. Michael Lloyd and Riley DeHart taking on Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson. Winner of this gets to play Gabe Tardio and Andre Diescu in our gold medal match here in Delray Beach. Take a look at Riley DeHart getting warmed up. So, Don, when you look at this matchup, 
what is the thing that stands out to you about who had the edge? Well, first, a great run here so far from Rowler to Hart and Michael Lloyd. Not that it's unexpected, but it kind of is a little bit. Having them run through <laughs> it's and not play. Une- it's not unexpected, but, but it wasn't expected. But it wasn't, but expected. It wasn't <laughs> expected. So that's exactly <laughs> it from Michael Lloyd and Rowler to Hart. But here's the thing is Rowler to Hart is playing really, really well right now. Yeah, they had and a good, good run last week in Miami and with a different partner. But. He's gone back to the bucket hat. So bucket hat wow. Rowler to Hart is back. Do we have and the – oh, no. No, this, no. It's this not space the, has been it's taken. Not the, it's not the space no, this is a, it's this a, is a this layover, layover bay. bay. The space is no longer available. Because Last year, he that one it, it was a black bucket hat that but it faded, faded, it to, yeah. faded to brown. <laughs> but this one is a new one, so he is busting out the new one, and they have made a good run. I like the combo of them two. They're both going to play with a lot of pace. They're going to try and bring the pressure to J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. But Chad. I'll let you talk about the two of them and what they can do with pressure. Okay, well, first off, I'm just going to say, don't try to test the hands yeah. of J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. Both of them have two... <laughs> Ryla Dodd is looking over and <laughs> shaking his head. That Both of them have two <laughs> spots. Frazier is elevated on the on the right, <laughs> right, for, uh, right uh, armpit, and Johnson is elevated on a higher backhand. Other than that, if it's inside a box, uh, you try to get through them, lightning fast hands. Also, look for that reach in on the backhand flick from J.W. Johnson. He'll reach in, flick it, go straight to the forehand, and it's an excellent one-two combination. But what we saw last week, or two weeks ago, in Miami was their ability to change and reassess the strategy so quickly. So we'll see if they can do that here this weekend because spot in the gold medal match is on the line between these two duos. And coming off of that first semifinal, what is the biggest thing that stood out to you, Dom, about the way that even Gabe and Andre have adjusted throughout the day from when we first saw them when we started the stream at 11 a.m.? Well, I was talking to Andre before I did their interview, and he's like, how much time do we have before the gold medal match tonight? And I was like, why? What's going on, man? He goes, we had eight minutes before between our second and third match and 12 minutes before our third and fourth match. He goes, I need a break, man. Well, I, w- I was <laughs> surprised that the men's draw caught up so quickly to the they women's. They did. They caught up real quick. So he didn't have much of a break, and he's very happy about that. But what I saw in that matchup was just the Esco and Tardio figuring out the pace, and it was like anything. And you know, I know Chad and I, we refer to baseball a lot, but it's like seeing a pitcher – in the first inning, in the third inning, in the fifth inning, and at bat. After each one of those innings, you kind of dial them in. Well, after about the first four or five points, you saw Deasco and Tardio dial in the pace from Lang and Nunnery, and that was all she wrote right there, and they played well and played good. You know, they moved on. Kind of interesting to see in both of our women's semifinals and our men's, we had two former partners playing against each other. So semifinal two underway here. Oh, that's dirty from Dylan Frazier. Sell it with the body. Makes it look like he's going to speed up. Just pushes one down the line behind Michael Lloyd and then sets it again and just a quick flick mini roll. Big there in the middle, right bit, at the feet of JW. A little bit of everything right there in that point. Nice lob from DeHart mm-hmm. in the middle. Good recovery, but great hands from DeHart. Riley's wife, Megan, already punched her ticket to tonight's gold medal match in the women's doubles. Riley trying to do the same thing here. Ball just checked up a little bit on Lloyd. Kind of slowed down his swing on the way through after contact or at contact. Ball just dropped a little too low for DeHart. 
Again, the wind at their back, so that third shot drop is dying as it gets to them. That lob, JW going to get there. Uh, he read that immediately. He set up nicely. Before DeHart even hits that, he's taking a step back. Well, that ball never came up. No. Might have been soft spot on the ball right there. That's how quick their hands are. Frazier just reaches in, elevates it, and you see as soon as he flicks with the forehand, he's on the backhand for the one-two. And an early timeout called here by DeHart and Lloyd as J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier come out and set the tone here in game one. Well, and that's what they do to you. They almost lull you into it, too, and it didn't even seem like it, but you then look up at the scoreboard, and it's 5 nothing in a heartbeat. Well, I think the thing that I found interesting in that first little stretch was you guys were talking about their lightning hands right and it's almost like they didn't show them early on it was just such an in pace in rhythm first few points and then that last one it was like choo, choo, choo. you know it, it, like the pace switched really quickly how to go choo, again choo, choo. Choo, choo, choo. Choo, choo, choo. i want to hear one more thought though <laughs> I but, like that. But, but, you know that's, better than, that's better than Chad. That's yeah. My 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 math doesn't move that fast. <laughs> um, but that's that's their style, right? Yep. They make mm -hmm. everything look the same, whether it's a dink, whether it's a flick, whether it's a roll, a speed up. Everything's going from the same motion, so it's difficult to read what they're going to do. Certainly, DeHart and Lloyd having a hard time reading it right now, trailing by five. Early on here in this first game, J.W. Johnson with the serve out of the timeout to try and extend this lead. Instead, Michael Lloyd, strong line drives there. Well, much better from Lloyd as he got that last one down. Post. Ooh, that's a rare miss there. Yeah, especially on that backhand flick right there, too. Not something we typically see from J.W. Johnson. So the heart left that ball up, and then Michael Lloyd popping it out of bounds. 0-5-2. Oh. Dylan nope, Fraser. Not today. Just when you think he might be late coming out of that uncoil, he is there in a heartbeat. And not only gets there, but puts a good paddle on the ball. That's that, JW right in the body of DeHart. That reset through transition from JW Johnson is so Six difficult to do. He's still moving down at that. The ball's at the feet, and he just blocks it, drops it in perfectly. And you watch the paddle position on it. He almost Doesn't flattens move. it out like like even or parallel with the ground. Yeah. Seven, and just catches one. it. Wow. I mean, the counter right there. He catches the heart with a full swing and then not ready for the counter. It goes really, right to that right hip. A really quick 8 nothing hey, lead here. J.W. Johnson with the serve. Going for the flick, can't get it over the net. So on to their second serve. If it was five five six six seven seven, he's not going for that. But at eight zero, he might as well try and make something happen. Or or if he is, he's using his legs a little bit more, and it's not as nonchalant with the attempt. 
Frazier with the second serve. Oh, oh. good reach there, J.W. Johnson that, with the angle. He doesn't just reach it; he puts spin on it. it that's a that's a reach and roll. We would take a look at it right here. Reach, roll. So he's already got it locked, right? He's reaching in. Already has the angle set. He comes up with it. So as he lifts up quickly, he catches the side of the ball and it and it kicks out. But at that same time. He can always say also take that ball and just flick it straight in front. So there's multiple things that he can do with that. And it sets up a game point opportunity here. Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson just systematic in this first game. They just have been incredibly clean, no mistakes, and putting the ball in the right spot. No, that's what they do, and that's their game. They're going to force you into mistakes. They're going to bait you into trying to speed up again. Go ahead. I dare you get in a hand settle with us because we'll counter it and we'll put it away. That's exactly what they've done. Time in. 10 Frazier with the serve. That could be game point. Oh, just missing that. Yep. The heart doing a good job. Keep him in that point. And it will be a side out. Ball. Bouncing off the bumpers right there. Again, just, it's an attack, but it's not an aggressive attack, so it gets the heart and Lloyd to swing bigger. Well, right now they don't want to close it out. <laughs> Got the first 10 points without many errors, but struggling to find this last one. Oh, Frazier, a tomahawk on top of that. Trying to end it with authority, but no go. So it will be Michael Lloyd with the serve here. Oh. Somehow the Atlantic Cup popped back up on the uh, TV over there. Nope, just deep. The Hearts lob, a little bit deep, so another side out here. And game point opportunity. And number four goes by the wayside. They've gotten just a little loose on a couple points here. That time, though, finishing off the way that they got their first 10. Very clean, executed to perfection. So 11 nothing. That's a pick one. Not an ideal start for Riley to Hart and Michael Lloyd. Plenty of pickles around here. <laughs> heading in to game two. Going to have to make some adjustments. We'll see if they can on the other side of this break. Eighteen years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped. Suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP.
less is more, unless it's less beer. to the APP Vlasic Classic Delray Beach. Game one goes to J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier with authority. 11-0. Now it's Riley DeHart and Michael Lloyd with the ball. Chance to rewrite the script here in game two. Hey, they got one. So, so Riley DeHart comes over in between games and looks at us and goes, hey, you can only go up from here. He's not wrong. And not wrong. They got on the, point, on the board first. That's two. That's two. <laughs> Rolling with the momentum right now. So right now it's just grip and rip. Oh. oh. Got twisted up. Thought he was going to take it out of the air. So it'll be a side out here. Frazier with the serve. Oh, set up beautifully by Michael Lloyd. Fall into the net. The heart. The heart's having some fun out there. He, he is. That's a good return. from Riley DeHart to finish that point. Big Ernie right there, and good read from DeHart. The backhand Ernie, too. 2-2-2 two, two, two. Two, two, two for Johnson's serve. DeHart trying to keep the pressure on and just misses deep on that final shot. Three, two, two. Tried to hit that through J.W. Johnson's chest. But he missed. He did. I was watching J.W. on the transition right there. Just walks through the transition. The hot red back. He just dropped the shoulder. That time, Johnson not missing that placement. And what? Slow moving, fast acceleration. 5 2 2. Johnson with the serve. Again, the heart just too big. That so, forehand's missing deep. So what happens right there, too, is because they play such good defense, you try and overhit a little bit, and that's what happens right there. The heart overhits because he's trying to put an exclamation point on the end of that sentence and then just goes long. So what is the remedy for that if you're a Riley to heart? Knowing you trail by four, you lost game one the way you did, how do you hold back a little bit more? Find the feet instead of going for the winner. All right, it's more difficult to pick that ball up from the feet. A lot of the times when we're trying to hit that that harder ball and it keeps coming back, it's because we're hitting it down into the court. We're allowing that ball to slow down a little bit from uh, from the court. So if, if we just find the feet, it's harder to pick up, and then it minimizes us trying to hit even harder for that ball not to come back. See if they can put that strategy into practice. Johnson with the serve, up by four. There it was again, Chad, what we talked about. That reset through transition. He just drops the paddle head, lets you do all the work, and drops right back in. So they get the side out, ball back on their side, with that forehand ripped into the net. Second serve. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, too much body movement there from Lloyd. Trying to get around it. Hit that big inside out. Drop. Oh, 
but landed in. Good hands there from the Hart and Lloyd. Left short by Lloyd. So it'll be a point. Did you see the heart and Lloyd's body right there when Johnson had a, a little fake with the body? They both popped up, anticipating that something hard was coming. Good pickup off his shoelaces at one point in that. Exchange for Michael Lloyd, but Frazier with the finish. Again, you got DeHart just trying to laugh it off right now because he's laughing off just the slapping motion of J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier, how easy it is for them. Speed up there from Lloyd. Frazier ready for it, and DeHart can't get his paddle out of the way. So it's a 9-2 lead here in game two for Frazier and Johnson. So you got an 11-0 run in game one. They win 11-0. Then they go down 2-0, and now it's a 9-0 run from J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. Just, it's just making, making things look easy and seem easy. Well, obviously it's not, but they, they do play more simplified pickleball. As far as moving the ball around, there's not a whole lot of wrist action that you'll see coming out of JW unless it's that quick flick. Same with Dylan Frazier. The very calm. The footwork is precise. It's not. There's not excessive footwork from either of them. And now Lloyd and DeHart out of timeouts. Time in. Just attack mode there from Lloyd. and That's how they got their first two points. Let's see if they just continue to try and attack here. Ooh. And they do. That's a rare one. Johnson. <laughs> Johnson. Off the monster. <laughs> I think he was video looking, board. looking at putting that one back in the hot chest right there. Lloyd unlucky off the net there, and so it'll be under their second serve. And another unlucky hit off the net. So a side out here. One point gotten back by DeHart and Lloyd, but Frazier and Johnson sitting just two away from punching their ticket to the gold medal match. Just what Dylan Frazier does so well, and J.W. Johnson does it too, is they just hit their spot. Doesn't have to be 100%, but Frazier right there just hits the left foot. Calm, cool, collected, way too casual for a semifinal win is how Frazier and Johnson made that look. 11 nothing, 11-3. Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson will be in our men's doubles gold medal match. We'll hear from them when we come back and get you set for women's doubles and men's doubles here at Delray Beach.
I'm Ariel Pastore Sebring here with Blast of Pickles, and we're putting the pickle in pickleball. In pickleball, the term pickled is when you don't score any points in a game. This grilled Blastic Pickle recipe will score you all the points. Slice them in half long ways. Here are your pickles, put those babies on the grill. Now we're gonna make our ranch. Roll in crushed potato chips. Winner's grill pickles. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. APP is sponsored by SI Tickets, official ticketing partner of the APP Tour. Eglin's Best, better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. And Aura Organic, rooted in science, powered by nature. Well, business as usual for the one seeds, J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. They make it look so easy with the control and the precision it's anything but that but they're moving on to the gold medal match in men's doubles and they're courtside with Dominic Catalano for our Franklin post-match interview so Dylan Chad said it was business as usual for you guys right there didn't seem like you were phased much by the pace do you like it when teams want to come out at you with that kind of pace uh, we're certainly comfortable when it comes down to the, that part of the game um, but Riley and we played Riley uh, Last tournament in Miami in the finals, so we had we had seen his game a little bit and, and kind of knew what to expect there and, and vice versa. Uh, Michael, relatively a new player for both of us. I think we played him maybe once or twice before. Um, but yeah, we were, we were definitely comfortable with the hands and uh, willing to do that if they were willing to do that. And now, JW, moving on to the gold medal match this evening. It's Andre Deescu and Gabe Tardio, two players you are very familiar with. What are you looking forward to most in that matchup? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good match no matter what. So... Um, I think for the most part, we're just going to look to play our game and see how things roll. But other than that, uh, I think it'll be a good match. All right. Well, congratulations, boys. Moving on to the gold medal match. Chad, AJ, back to you. Thanks so much, Dominic Catalano, with our interview there. And like he said, we got two gold medal matches to play tonight here at Delray Beach. So it's going to start, Chad, with the women, J Georgia Johnson and Millie Rain against Jill Braverman and Megan Fudge. Yeah, I think, yo. Know, in this one, Jill Braveman is, is going to be my X factor. You know, we, we saw her in the semifinals. She's very loud. She puts the pressure on, but she also stepped up and started to be a little bit more aggressive. You see her right there flying across the screen. She's putting pressure on. Fudge and Braverman are moving well together. Their court coverage, their understanding is going to put Johnson and Rain to the test, but this is going to be a very fast-paced, electrifying women's doubles final. So then, Dom, we move into the men's doubles. We just saw JW and Dylan punch their ticket going up against Andre Diascu and Gabe Tardio, like you mentioned. What are you looking for in that match? Well, Andre Diascu and Gabe Tardio right there. It's going to be a good matchup, but can Gabe Tardio stay within playing against two players he knows really well, and that being J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier, which he practices with every single day. So, again, that's my expector. Can Gabe keep it together and say, hey, I'm going to play solid here, and I'm going to do what I need to do next to Andre, who can really take over. So that's what I'm looking for in that matchup later on this evening. So two gold medal matches still coming your way here from Delray Beach on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. We're going to pick up our coverage 5 o'clock local time on CBS Sports Network. So make sure to join us over there because today there was sweat, there were tears, there were emotions here on Championship Court. And understandably so because you want to be playing underneath the lights on a Saturday night. 5 o'clock on CBS Sports Network. We'll see you then for our women's and men's doubles gold medal matches from the APP Blasted Classic, Delray Beach.
Sweat, blood, and tears. All right. 